Red Dog, bold yet smooth, unusually easy to drink. This is Red Dog territory. The scene underground Atlanta last night, a party, a serious party. They know how to do it here in the South, and another one here at the Georgia Dome this evening as the party continues. The Bulldogs of Mississippi State, ranked number 18 of the country against the 23rd ranked Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Welcome back once again, Joel Myers along with Todd Blackledge, and let's join the third member of our team now. Can't do a game without the good doctor, can we? Down to Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Thank you very much, Joel, and Happy New Year, everyone. You know, the task for the NC State defense is a tall one, or should I say a wide one, given the massive weight differential between them and the Bulldog offensive line. But in what may have been the best-kept secret in Atlanta this week, the defensive task got a little bit tougher. They will be without their second-leading tackler, free safety James Walker, who was suspended for one game due to a violation of team rules. And a softened Walker's loss, they will get Kenny Harris back. Harris has not played since breaking his arm in the seventh game of the season against North Carolina. He will play with a soft cast. You see on his right arm there? That is covering a steel plate and two screws that are holding his own with a small bone on his forearm together. But without Walker, the task for Mike O'Kane and the Wolfpack defense has just gotten a lot taller. Joel? All right, Jerry. Well, it is going to be tough for Mike O'Kane finishing up his second season at North Carolina State. But not his second season there. He's been there since 86 and has assisted under Dick Sheridan. And Jackie Sheridan. Sheryl in his fourth year at Mississippi State. Plenty of experience, though. 17th season overall as a head coach. Great years. You remember a pit Texas A&M as well. And have now taken the Bulldogs to the third bowl appearance over the last four years. Quite a run in Starkville for Jackie Sherrill. Mississippi State has won the toss, so some excitement right off the bat for us at the Georgia Dome. You're looking at the nation's kickoff return champion, Eric Moulds. When he brings it back, the average start of a drive at the 42. Others, not bad at all at 31, but still 42. It's great field position. Well, when you have a guy like that, even if you try to kick it away, sometimes you end up hurting yourself your own kick coverage. I mean, he is a guy that you just have to decide how do you want to deal with, and I expect, even though Vitek has a great leg, I expect to see them maybe try a high kick, try to get the good uh, coverage downfield with the good hang time on the kick, not let him get a running start, even maybe try to make one of the up guys field the football. Steve Vitek kicks it away, and Molds will let it go out of bounds at the five. Now the option is, of course, with the Mississippi State, they can take it to the 35, or a five-yard markoff, but they'll take it to the 35, and they'll have it first and 10. The offensive look, we start with the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Co-MVP offensively, Fred McCrary, great blocker, but his offensive coordinator told us they want to hit him with passes early in the contest in the flat. Chris Jones, the wide receiver, the junior from Tupelo, up and down season, according to his coach, but really came on down the stretch. And on the offensive line, Jason Wisner goes to 325-6-3. Tuesday, I think he was ready when he challenged the Atlanta Falcons to a game. There's some serious beef up front for Mississippi State. The quarterback Tate throw it on first down, and he's got that man available. On first down right away, going to Fred McCrary. So the coach was true to his word. Bruce Arians told us the offensive coordinator wanted to get into the hands of McCrary. Eric Counts, the strongest one up front for North Carolina State. He is their left tackle defensively for the Wolfpack as we look at the linebackers. Covington, the senior from Berlin, New Jersey, first team all ACC in each of the last two seasons. And the shakeup of the secondary because of the suspension of James Walker. So Ricky Bell started every game in the corner, now moving over to strong safety. That means Dre Major is going to move up with his first start of the year at the corner spot. Tate looking to throw again after nice play action. Look at this. Watkins gets it this time, and he's the other co-MVP offensively. So right away, they reward their two MVPs with the first two balls of the game. And one thing I've learned right now is when Bruce Arian says something, we can certainly Thank believe you. it. He said that he wanted to get both of those guys the football early in the game. Watkins only had five catches coming into this ball game. He said that he wanted to get five catches for him tonight. Again, the running game is the threat. You fake the run and come out on the bootleg. Tate has great mobility and a nice job by Watkins, the big blocker, catching the ball with his hands. Second and two. Michael Davis, the single set. Two tight end formation. They want to throw it again, and they find Watkins again. First down inside the Wolfpack 35. He said he wanted to get at least five balls in the hands of Kendall Watkins to reward the senior from Jackson, Mississippi.
Mississippi for all he's done for the team. Well, what North Carolina State's doing, first of all, there's the tight end. Now look at all these defenders committed to the line of scrimmage. There's eight people up there. They're expecting the run. Mississippi State is tossing them up. They're faking the run. They've got all those people around the line of scrimmage, and the tight end just slips right off the line of scrimmage. So three plays in the ball game. They've gone play action and have made it work each time. First and 10 for the Wolfpack in 34. And Tate wants to throw it again. He has a man. Is it taken in? Yes. What a grab on the far side by Chris Jones diving down to get it. Another first down to the 22. Jackie Sherrill with putting curveballs early. We said at the top, now watch the pressure. They're trying to come with blitzes on the inside and on the outside. They're going to really try to pressure Derek Tate. They figure we're not going to let the running game beat us. We want to force him to throw. Well, so far it's working against him because Tate is four for four and gaining more and more confidence as the game goes on. Do you believe this? A running back hasn't touched the ball yet from Mississippi State. They've taken it from their own 35 to the Wolfpack's 22, and they still haven't run the ball. Tate in trouble and throws it away as he's hit. Heads up play for the quarterback, Derek Tate, with the pressure coming from Damian Covington. Tate is a sophomore from Moss Point, Mississippi. He threw for 466 yards and a win over two lanes, so he can get it downfield. You know, the thing about Derek Tate is that early in the season, he hurt his ankle rather severely. Now, he has great speed, 4-5 speed. But when he hurt his ankle, he was forced to, to not rely on his strength, which was his ability to scramble and run. He had to stay in the pocket, learn how to read defenses. And I'll tell you what, it, it has really paid off for him as a quarterback. Take a look at Denver Johnson, the offensive line coach over there for Mississippi State. The, the, the development of Derek Tate over the course of this season has been dramatic as a passer. Second and 10 on 22 of the Wolfpack. First one. situation the ultimate is the defensive coordinator Ken Bettis from North Carolina State told us he wanted to gamble early on first and second down to put them in long yardage situations on second and third and this is not the strength of the Mississippi State offense here when they get into the third down shotgun situation this big offensive line is much better when they're all bunched in together not in this pass drop situation uh, the shotgun pressure on tape that overthrows Bones. Takes a shot from Williams Strong at the end of the play that will send a message for later in the game, obviously. Pressure on Tate once again as well. Take a look at Carl Reeves as he's going to come from the right of your screen. He works to the inside, and he runs right past the right guard, Purvis Hunt. Now, Purvis Hunt is sitting in there at 360 pounds. Carl Reeves is very, very fast. He's got to be alert for that inside stunt and hold his position. Purvis Hunt, that is. Jim Rogers with a 37-yard try on its way and just inside the upright so Jackie Gerald Bulldogs of Mississippi State with an early lead not even two and a half minutes into the game they take it from their own 35 and get three to take the lead over North Carolina State the Peach Bowl is presented by Isuzu makers of incredible four-wheel drives it's a unique experience. You come to Atlanta, you've got to go underground. Now, welcome back once again to Peach Bowl 95. Joel Myers along with Ty Blackledge and Dr. Jerry Punch in an early 3 to nothing lead for Mississippi State. Yeah, Mississippi State moved the ball well. Derek Tate showed a lot of poise and confidence throwing the football. But, you know, really the gamble that North Carolina State took coming into this ball game, it kind of paid off. They didn't allow the touchdown. North Carolina State has sent a message to Derek Tate right now. They said, son, if you're going to win the game, you're going to be the guy that's going to have to beat us. We are going to commit ourselves to stopping the run, and we're going to make you throw the ball to beat us. He hit his first four, missed the next two. They had to settle for the field goal, but early momentum for Mississippi State with a 37-yarder from Tim Rogers. And that could have been good from 50. He got plenty of foot into it. So now, North Carolina State ready to get it for the first time, and into the end zone it goes. No return available. When it was back there, Matier and Russ really got into it. 
Offensively, Tremaine Stevens, a true freshman from Greer, South Carolina. He started only five times this year, second team All-ACC, yet he still led the Wolfpack in rushing. The flanker, Adrian Hill, he's got to step it up because of the injury to Eddie Goins. Their leading receiver lost the last three games of the season with a knee injury. And Chris Henney Road, the left tackle, the senior from Florida, the bright young man. 3.5, great point average in biological sciences. Offensive look at North Carolina State. Terry Harvey, their quarterback. Dacula, Georgia. Throwing on first down. He's got a man, and he's got a first down. Mike Guffey. All the way out to the 39. Both teams coming out early trying to throw the football, and Terry Harvey, when he is in rhythm, and when he gets back and sets his feet and throws in rhythm, he is very accurate. You can see a nice drop. Good pass protection. He's able to set his feet and makes the strong throw to the sideline right between two Mississippi State defenders. A nice start for both quarterbacks in the ballgame. That was a rope. That was a bullet from Harvey. Running in the option? No, it's the fullback who gets very little Rod Brown. The sophomore from Lithonia, Georgia. And now defensively, Jimmy Miles up front, the senior from Pascagoula. The only one who really came back with any kind of experience on the defensive front for Mississippi State this year. The linebacker position, Dwayne Curry, the very intense one. Led the team in tackles. Second best total, in fact, of the SEC. And Walt Harris is only a junior, and he's already owns the Mississippi State record for interceptions. He's got 12 over the last two years. Tremaine Stevens coming to back against the grain, and he gets it out to the 45. Long striding freshman, and is he ever quick? Tremaine Stevens has very good vision for a young running back. That's what enables him to make those cutback runs. You see, as they started that play to the left, it was a toss sweep to the left, but as soon as he saw a crease to the backside, he was there in a heartbeat. He's got very good quickness once he gets into the hole, and Mississippi State is going to have to be very concerned with his ability to cut runs back against the grain of the defense. First third down try of the day. For North Carolina State is a third and four from their own 45. And they capitalize on the field position now. Tremaine Stevens into the secondary. Weaving magic to the 42. These two crowds from the two schools have been a lot of fun. Have been into it ever since they walked into this building. Take a look at the vision again of Tremaine Stevens as he sees the block set up. A great cut there. He got a great block by his fullback on the middle linebacker, Curry. And then once he's past the first line of defense, he's into the secondary. Watch Curry. This is their run stopper. And watch the collision. Folks, we're going to see that all night. Fullback against middle linebacker, Dwayne Curry. Thank you, Rod Brown, the fullback. First and 10 outside of the 42. They love to run the option. Stevens tries to bend it to the boundary, and he does so successfully. He's got another first down inside the 30 with a flag down at the end of the play on a late hit. Near the 25, and tack on a few more. 17 yards on that carry. On that play, cornerback Charlie Davidson, number five, got a wake-up call as to the speed and acceleration of Tremaine Stevens. Watch Davidson, number five, just totally misinterpret or underestimate the speed of Stevens as he turned the corner on him so easily. Davidson's got to put that in his memory bank and say, hey, look, this guy's got some speed. you got to give him a little bit of an angle when you're trying to tackle him on the perimeter. And then you saw at the end of the play the shot from the strong safety, Johnny Harris, well out of bounds, half the distance. So they take it inside the 13 where it's first and 10. Mississippi State is a very aggressive defensive football team, but they've been penalized 95 times coming into this game. That's their 96th penalty on the year. That was the 11th worst statistic in the SEC. So overly aggressive at some point. They go with the wing back in a single set, and they run the reverse on the pitch. Adrian Hill down to the 10. Where will they go the 9? A little misdirection on that toss. You'll see that from North Carolina State with the way they like to run the option. They're showing a little bit of their entire package in this opening drive, and that's exactly what Michael Kane and offensive coordinator Ted Kane, the guy you see behind him there with the headsets, that's what they want to do in this opening drive. Show them the option, show them the drop back throw, show them the play action, and show them the power of football with the fullback or the tailback lead. I mean, it's that's what you hope to do ideally in your opening series. Show them a little bit of everything, make them defend your whole package. Mississippi State. 
Tech with a 3 to nothing lead on a 37-yard field goal, but now North Carolina State, their first possession, the fullback Brown, not much available. On second and just about seven, takes it down to the eight to another third down coming up for the Wolfpack offense. You know what I really enjoyed hearing from head coach Michael Cannon? Right when we sat down with him, he said, it's a very courageous team. They're not a huge team, but they may be a group that has played as close to their potential as much as any team that he's ever yeah. been around. Yeah, he said he doesn't like to use the term un, uh, overachievers. He says, rather than say it that way, I'd rather say that they've come very close to meeting their potential. I think that's a real good way of phrasing that. And this team plays exceptionally hard for their head coach. They go trips to the far side for Terry Harvey. On the third and just about six. Need to take it inside the three, close to the two for first down. Harvey with time and a wide open receiver. Grissom at the five, will he get to the marker? Yes! Jimmy Grissom, the sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. And Andre Bennett, the free safety, stopping him just short of the goal line. Nice job by Terry Harvey, neutralizing the crowd noise. They're going into the Mississippi State end zone, so he just used the foot signal to get the shotgun snap. He stays in the pocket, and watch the strength of Grissett at the end of the play. Make the first guy miss, and then break two tackles. And there's the enthusiasm of the head guy, Mike O'Kane. Trips in the backfield. Stevens, the deep back. Harvey looking to throw, wide open. He's got a man, and over throws. In the end zone, Mark Thomas, freshman tied in out of Smithfield, North Carolina. I like the call, though. A nice call, but what hurt Harvey was two of his receivers were actually running to the same spot. When you run the play action down inside the goal line, you want one guy to come flat and go right along the goal line and the other guy to go to the back of the end zone. They didn't have the proper spacing on that play. It was a great call, but the execution wasn't there. Ted Kane, the offensive coordinator. And Mike O'Kane, he liked to call. He thought they had it. Second and goal from outside the one. They're on the option. It's Tremaine Stevens. And North Carolina State is on the board. comes down the line watch the block by Carlos King 39 right there on Charlie Davidson enables his tailback Tremaine Stevens to take it into the end zone a beautifully executed option play and an outstanding drive for Terry Harvey in the Wolfpack offense Steve Vitek two-time all ACC place kicker makes it a four-point advantage for the Wolfpack of North Carolina State 21 left of the opening 15 minutes of play a wild one early 27th annual peach ball coach okay liked it just a little bit along with Todd black legend dr jerry punch joel myers at peach bowl 95 and welcome back once again to the georgia dome a seven to three lead early for north carolina state well, before the break on the first replay, you saw the block by the fullback. Now watch this block by the left guard, Steve Kime, as he slips out here and gets enough of a piece of the linebacker, Mike James. James is trying to fill the play, but watch Kime get enough of the piece of the linebacker, slows him up just enough that he can't make the tackle in time. Stevens able to take him into the end zone for the touchdown. That's good work by the fullback and by the left guard, Steve Kime. Both teams scoring on their opening drives. 80 yards travel that time by the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. You see the mix of pass and run. And the touchdown. Tremaine Stevens. Not a bad average. Nine yards per pop. In his five starts, he had better than 100 yards in four of those five. And he showed a little bit of everything. He ran the sprint draw. He ran the power lead play. And he also took the pitch on the option. So he did a little bit of everything in that drive. They kick it away from Moles. It'll be the key coming back. And the key is popped. He gets it back to the 20-yard line. Downfield first. It was Kit Carpenter. Freshman inside linebacker out of Dalton, Georgia, making the play. And what a throw for that young man growing up close to Atlanta with a big special teams tackle. And we head downstairs, check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry. Guys, that first drive for the Wolfpack offensive line, and the total offense was a major morale boost. They've heard all week long how big Mississippi State was. Behind me, Ted Kane and Robbie Caldwell 
the offensive line coach Kane, the offensive coordinator, is drawing. Now see how the players are sitting. It's like a classroom setting. Something NC State did at Maryland this year when they scored 47 points. It's put a board down, put chairs around it. Boy, a learning set. That's what they're doing here on the offensive side. Back up there. First and ten, they get a promotion man. Moles got a bad idea. He loses it. Andre and Andre hit the turf at the 27 for a gain of seven. And they try to get Moles the ball as often as possible. They couldn't on that opening drive. They went in his direction a couple of times, but do it right away on this one. Yeah, I think any time Mississippi State plays, if they can get the ball in his hands about ten times in the game, they really increase their chances to win. This is a play and a series of plays they like to use. That ball looked out, but his knee also looked down. Very close. The ground cannot cause a fumble. I think his knee was down, and the ball came out just a little bit after that. Second and three, and going, breaking the tackles in the backfield, short the first down by a little less than a yard. About Michael Davis and Kevin Bowie, they said they're so close that Michael Davis is saying to Kevin Bowie before the game, "You want to start?" Because obviously, it doesn't make all that much of a difference to the two. You know, in college football, you just are not accustomed to seeing tailbacks that weigh 225 pounds, but also have the speed to run like a tailback. And they've got two of them here. Uh, unfortunately for Jackie Sherrill, they're both seniors, so he doesn't have either one to come back. But they have been so productive this year. Michael Davis, the leading rusher, Kevin Bowie, just a few yards behind him. You can see it's a matter of inches short of that first down. And Davis started the season in strong fashion for Jackie Sherrill. And what a bonus for him. And then Bowie came on with a charge at the end. He had four consecutive 100-yard games. And then Davis, second all-time leading rusher in Mississippi State history. Only 100 yards behind the all-time leader, Walter Packers totals. Walter running for the Bulldogs from 73 to 76. A real compliment in the backfield, especially when you've got a Fred McCrary who's a great blocker, and also when we've seen him catching those passes from the flat early tonight. So now third inches. North Carolina State this year has been a pretty good short yardage defensive team. They get good leverage and they're very quick off the football. And Bowie, he got more than enough for the first down, spinning out to the 34. Now we have heard from both coaches, Todd, that we're going to see the backup quarterbacks tonight. Possibly by the third series for Mississippi State. That's Darren Clark in the fourth or third series as well for NC State. Take a look at this surge on the left side. I mean, they're just a big bunch of bodies that, that get in there and their line splits are shoe to shoe and they come off in unison. And I'll tell you what, it's just hard to get any penetration against that kind of a movement. When they are in first and second down and can have all those big bodies in there together, they can be really tough to stop. Six of the first ten plays, passes. Looking to set up the screen, finds Bowie. Bowie, what a tough runner. Out to a first down across the 45. Did it all after the catch. 11 yards on the reception as Counts gets up slowly. You're going to see a picture right now of how strong these backs are for Mississippi State because Kevin Bowie is going to catch this screen pass, and the best tackler on North Carolina State's team is Damian Covington. Now watch him run right through the tackle of number 36, Damian Covington. He breaks four tackles on that play, but most significantly, he breaks the tackle of Covington. And Covington doesn't miss too many men. Take now five of seven of the passing department. Huge hole for Bowie. Up the middle, he goes for another first down to the 39. Well, that was a concern. job by Chris Arians. The first series, they came out and loosened up the defense, throwing the football, and now they come back to their, their what they like to do. Here's Covington in the middle. Watch him as he tries to fill on the left side, and as he faces this big blocking wall of people, the center just kind of makes Covington take a false step, and Bowie's into the secondary. He's got to make correct reads. I mean, he's very good at diagnosing plays. That time he took one false step to the inside, and the running back went by. Great carries, 23 yards are for any offense. Just talked about the rush at the end of the year for Kevin Bowie, the senior from Florida.
over the last four. He averaged 156 yards a game. Not too shabby. Especially when you're not necessarily a starting tailback that carries the ball 30 times a game. I mean, he has just been very productive when he's in the football game. He stays in the backfield on second and a yard. It'll be an audible throw to Optimals on the outside. They leave it in the hands of Pooley again, and he's in the secondary. Not exactly an auspicious start for either defensive unit. North Carolina State, we said they were going to gang up on the line of scrimmage, and they are, and they're expecting their middle linebacker to make the right reads. He took a step to the inside, and that was all the center Brian Anderson, number 65, needed. If, he, if the guy takes one bad step, all he has to do is kind of get his body out there and shield him away from the ball carrier. And two plays in a row, Kevin Bowie has cut off the block of his center, Brian Anderson. Mississippi State on first downs this year, and they've got a first and ten of the Wolfpack 20. Down by four. Bowie again, breaking the initial tackle of the backfield, and he trips up. Otherwise, a lot more yardage going towards the boundary, but still he takes it down to the 13-yard line for seven. Let's go down to the sideline with Jerry Punch once again. Jerry? Guys, Mississippi State officials believe that their left guard, Jason Wisner, may be the strongest athlete in college football this year. Wisner was a state high school weightlifting champion from Natchez, Mississippi. He was a national powerlifting champion at the age of 17. And get this, guys, at Mississippi State, he has benched 500 pounds, and he has squatted an incredible 905 pounds. Take a look at the legs on Wisner. They look like tree trunks out there. You know, Doctor, he's listed at six foot three. I don't think he's anywhere close to six foot three, but he is a powerful young man. Bowles out of the backfield in motion. On second and short. Fred McCray, the fullback, takes it near a first down inside the 10. It'll depend upon the spot. Now, Jackie Sherrill's offense coordinator, Bruce Arias, he told us that he feels like he can play almost 20 to 21 people on offense, and he planned on wearing down the Wolfpack early by multiple substitutions like that. North Carolina State is very thin on defense, and as we documented at the beginning of the show, they're missing uh, a key player, James Walker, their free safety, and there we take a look at Ken Pettis, the defensive coordinator. He knows that this is, uh, this is not what he wanted to see. He's taking a gamble and, and committing eight people to the line of scrimmage, but right now Mississippi State is able to push those guys off. First and goal, Mississippi. Mississippi State. That's how Michael Davis takes over from Bowie. Bowie had carried the ball on six of the first seven plays of this drive before McCrary got that first down. You know, Joel, the key, if you're going to play this kind of a defense, if you're going to commit so many people to the line of scrimmage, if you're going to bring eight people up there, you're going to get somebody that gets into a gap that's free, that's unblocked, because the offense doesn't have enough people to block you. The key is, is if you get into the open, you've got to make a tackle. And if, if you miss a tackle and the running back gets past that first line, you can give up big plays, and that's what's happened on this drop. Second and goal outside the eight. Four and a half minutes left in the first 15 minutes of play. The delay. Ken Pettis, the defensive coordinator, felt like he had to gamble to have any kind of shot early. Take a look at Carl Reeves on the lower left of your screen. Here he is right here. Watch him fight off the block as he comes upfield. They're going to run the counter trap at him. He's going to take on the block, shed two blocks, and still get a hand on the tackle. That is tremendous leverage defense by Carl Reeves. He's, he's much smaller than the guys that they set to block him, but he stayed low, kept under their pads, was able to make the play. In the red zone. 36 of 45 from Mississippi State. Watch the jump ball to Eric Moles in the corner. Working out of the shotgun. Here comes third and goal. And Tate calling his own number. Kenny Harris, who gets the start tonight. Walker over at free safety. Made that big hit at the four. Take a listen to this hit from the sideline. This crowd is really into the game early. <laughs> so many people made the trip from Carolina and Mississippi. Tim Rogers accounting for the only point so far for Mississippi State. Came in 12 of 20 on the year. This is like an extra point. And it's good from 21. 
from Jackie Carroll's side. Down by only a point now at 2.57 left in the first quarter of Peach Bowl 95. The field goals early for Mississippi State as they're down by a point to NC State. And welcome back to the Peach Bowl once again. Big play by Kenny Harris inside the five, starting over there at free safety. He broke his arm just a few weeks back. Well, this is Kenny Harris right here. Now, what Mississippi State's going to try to do is the quarterback is going to try to throw a shovel pass right here, but he has another option. If that's not there, then this guy's going to drop off the line, and it becomes an option with this man being the pitch man. But watch the play that Kenny Harris makes as he reads the play. Shuffle pass isn't there, so Tate is going to run the option, and here comes Harris out of nowhere and makes the big hit, keeping him short of the goal line. A trick play, a good call by Bruce Arians, but very well defended by the safety, Kenny Harris. 76 yards, but frustrated again, and not a great percentage. We saw that red zone number, 26 touchdowns and 45 tries inside the red zone as Russ sent it to the end zone. Now Mateer will bring it back, this time from the six. And Mateer with a great return to the 29. We go back downstairs with Jerry Punch. Jerry. Guys, not real good news for the Wolfpack here as far as defensively is concerned. They have their, one of their starting tackles. Mike Harrison is on the sideline being taped. He sprained his ankle on that third and goal situation a moment ago. There's Harrison sitting on the bench being taped by Mark Boat right now. On the third and short situation, also Eric Counts, the biggest guy that got defensively, came off holding his left shoulder. Now, Counts is expected to go back in, but apparently he has a chronically subluxating or dislocating left shoulder. He was in a lot of pain about five minutes ago. Back up there. All right, Jerry, we talked about it at the very top of the telecast, how physically demanding it was going to be for North Carolina State. It started taking its toll. The play fake. And what a beauty for Terry Harvey. Going for Hill. And it's incomplete. The official very emphatic with the call. And so was Jackie Sherrill. He made the call earlier than the official. He was right on that one. He, he was not going to allow that one to be called a completion. Great play fake by Harvey. They really fooled the defense, really sold the play fake. And as he comes out on the roll, just comes up a little short on this throw. Take a look at the end of the route here as Adrian Hill tries to come back to the ball. He trapped it. He trapped the ball. Jackie was right. Good call. <laughs> Official Cheryl. <laughs> Jermaine Stevens stays in the backfield for North Carolina State. The Wolfpack leading by a point. 2.43 left in the opening quarter. Stevens finds the crease. Get out of his way. Missed his own man and finally taken down from behind. All the way to the 49. Does he ever have some speed? Well, the Wolfpack got away with one here because Adrian Hill, the wide receiver, started to move a little bit early, and they didn't call it. But watch the cutback again. The play starts to the left. Nobody gives up on a block on the backside. And once Steven sees a crease, he has great acceleration through the hole. Only one in his way early was Mike Guffey, his wide receiver, his own teammate. He really shows some good acceleration. As he, as he sees a hole, he really gets to that spot in a hurry. shot of his shoulder. And now the razzle dazzle on the flea flicker. They told us if he catch it plays. Harvey buying some time. He can maneuver. It's maybe a half a yard after all is said and done. Well, if you've looked at the strong arm of Terry Harvey and wondered why you haven't heard all that much about him as a college quarterback, and he's starting to make some noise, of course, over the last couple of years. He's a junior from Georgia. Well, the baseball in the ACC, they know about Terry Harvey. Threw a no-hitter at Florida State this year, this past spring. So he can throw some fastballs as Brian Fitzgerald comes into the backfield to work a tailback. We saw Jermaine Stevens will follow up on that, go off, and it looked like he took a shot in the shoulder. And there's the numbers from his baseball career. Terry Harvey does have a gun, and he's got a wide open Fitzgerald in the flat, breaking the initial tackle. Jumped out of bounds just short of the first down with a strong safety, Johnny Harris. That is a huge blow if Stevens has to stay on the bench very long. Now, Brian Fitzgerald is the backup tailback, and he is really uh, is an adequate player, but Jermaine Stevens gives him that extra dimension. He gives him that ability to make the big plays. Take a look. He's only started five games this year. Had a turf toe injury earlier in the year, but when he has been in there, four of his five starts, over 100 yards. They can sorely afford to lose him in this ballgame. 
and they're missing him right now on third down. Look at that game. Look at those numbers against Wake Forest. 20 carries for 189 yards. The option. It's Fitzgerald spinning. He comes up short by another yard. Now, a decision early for North Carolina State. Nice play by Walt Harris, the cornerback. Their defensive coordinator, Bill Clay, told us that, that this defense, or North Carolina State's offense, really puts pressure on your corners to make tackles, both in the passing game and in their option game. That time, Walt Harris really responded, came up and made the nice tackle short of the first down marker. Chad Robson, senior from New Bern, North Carolina. 38-yard average coming in is going to punt it away, so they won't go for it on fourth and a yard. Scott Gamina is waiting back at about the 10. Maybe a good time to go with a long count here. There it is. They got the contact. That should be offside. They did get the contact with the shift. It really threw off Mississippi State. Good call. It's a good place for it because even if you get five-yard penalty for delay a game, then you still are going to punt the football anyway. Jackie can't believe it. Well, Jackie's claiming it was an illegal shift. Defensive contact. Oh. Huge play early. Take a look as they're in the tight punt formation, and then on the snap count, they're going to shift out into a wide punt formation. You can see as the linemen went down, the wide receiver shifted out, and all it took was one guy to come across the line and make contact. A very good call, very well executed by the North Carolina State special teams. Heads up play by North Carolina State. The drive is still alive. I'd it go to Abraham back Hill 29. Right now. You're going to have to go into the next booth to get that call if you want to, partner. They bring down Fitzgerald with great penetration by Dwayne Curry in the back. Team all SEC led the team in tackles, second best total in the Southeastern Conference as well. And that is going to be the final play of the first quarter. What a wild beginning to this contest! Plenty of offense from both sides, and unfortunately for North Carolina State, the shoulder injury to their leading rusher, Tremaine Stevens. One point lead for North Carolina State at the end of the first quarter. Do not want to see their leading ground gainer, Tremaine Stevens, off to a great start tonight. He's on the sideline with a shoulder injury. Fortunately, they put the pads back on, though. When we broke away, the pads were off. And let's get an update with Jerry Punch. Jerry? Indeed, they are holding their collective rest here on the sidelines, Joel. Behind me, Tremaine Stevens. Let me show you what happened. He actually fell on his right front ribs, the anterior ribs, just below the pectoralis major muscle, the big muscle here in the chest. And they were palpating the rib. They first thought he may have broken a rib. That is Drs. Michael and David Feigenbaum, the orthopedic surgeons working with him. They took the pads off. They have repadded his shoulder pads with a rib protector and put the pads back on. He is going to try to go back in, back upstairs. They're on the screen back the other way. And it doesn't fool Mississippi State's Mike James. Well, we know if there's x-rays on Stevens at halftime, the Jerry Punch is going to be one of the first ones to take a look at those. Thanks, Jerry. As they continue to work on Stevens and some extra protective gear. Well, take a look now. This is Mike James working right in here. Now, Mississippi State has two defenders in Scott Gamina and Mike James that are actually the size of defensive backs. And they're in there for just this kind of play. They read the pass. They have the speed and the quickness to cover a receiver out of the backfield. And he makes the big play behind the line of scrimmage. Not very big for a linebacker, but has excellent quickness and instincts in pass coverage. Third and 13 now. Strong arm, Terry Harvey. He's out of the shotgun with three wide receivers working. And he's got pressure from the backside. Going back the other way. Guppy loses it. Even if he gets it back, though, he lost the first down. And he had the first down at the 25 before the ball popped free. You're right. He had the first down before the hit knocked the ball loose. And now on the recovery, they're going to be short by about a yard and a half. Great play by Terry Harvey, just buying himself a little extra time. You don't like to see your quarterback make a steady diet of throwing across his body, but watch him as he eludes pressure in the pocket, just steps away from the oncoming rush and then whips it back across his body. A perfect throw to Guffey. Right there he had the first down, but a big hit coming out of the backfield by James Holloway jars the ball loose. It's going to be a 45-yard field goal drive for one of the very best place kickers in the country. The senior from Winston-Salem, Scott 
I think it's Steve Vitek. He's got plenty of foot into it. And it's good. Made attack on target. He is now 17 of 19 on the season. And it's a four-point lead for the Wolfpack. The Peach Bowl is presented by Isuzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drives. The state capital as we welcome you back to Atlanta, Georgia. Joel Myers, Todd Blackledge, Dr. Jerry Punch. Happy New Year to all of us from ESPN to you and your family as Darren Clark is ready to come in for Mississippi State. We mentioned both backup quarterbacks should see activity tonight in the final game of the year for both teams. Darren Clark, the junior from Natchez, Mississippi. Backed up Derek Tate this year, but they like to get him involved. And I like the concept, period, from both head coaches to get the quarterback involved in the first half in case emergency duty is needed later. Well, what the Bulldogs like to do, and they've done it all year, is every game, the third series, they bring their backup quarterback, Darren Clark, in, and they also bring his own center in, Dan Hoover. I think that's probably the best move that they do because every quarterback is different with their hands, with their cadence, with the way they take the football. So he's very comfortable with the backup center, Dan Hoover. So he will come in with Hoover, and normally, they also bring in two new guards, so it's kind of a whole uh, new feel for that offensive team that comes in with Darren Clark. I like the idea. It is a good idea. You know, you get the guy in the ball game because even though he warmed up before the game, it's still different. Game speed is different. He gets a taste of it early. They pin Moles to the boundary. Let's see what he can do with it from the five. That kickoff return champion is buried by the same man who got him earlier. Kit Carmen to the redshirt freshman from Dalton, Georgia. So he takes it back to the 22, well below his average, brings it back for 17. Average 33 on the year on his 13 returns. And here comes Darren Clark, 6-foot, 190-pound junior. Through 17 balls this year. And three of the 10 he completed went for scores. Not a bad ratio. 13-17 left in the opening half. 10-6 lead for North Carolina State. stop the sophomore from Columbia South Carolina I wouldn't be surprised now with the quarterback switch that North Carolina State would really sell out to the line of scrimmage and really try to stop the running game try to get a three and out Clark coming off the bench I'm sure they don't think of him as a guy that's going to be able to throw the ball against him as well as Derek Tate has early in this ball game so now second and long give Davis a yard to second and nine for the 23 First down. He's out of bounds across the 30. Just a couple of yards shy of where he needed to go for the first down. He's a senior from Morton, Mississippi. Averages 85 yards a game, an all time Bulldog leader in rushing touchdowns, 27 on his career. You know, the thing about this offensive line, we, we talk about the size, and everybody around the country making a, a, a bunch of discussion about the size of this offensive line, but they are absolutely athletic as well. I mean, particularly the two tackles, Jesse James, 72, and Melvin Hayes, 76. They're very athletic. Both can run about 4-9. Take a look at the, the weight differential of those guys. And the give for the first down goes to McCrary. You saw on that weight differential, a 53-pound difference between the offensive beef up front. There's that bulldog. The offensive line for Mississippi State at the defensive front. And take a look at this as the, as the play starts. Just watch this forward wall come off. Wright gets a great push on the play. Reeves actually gets good penetration but can't make the tackle on the fullback McCrary. But they just get all moving in the same, same rhythm, the same tempo. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of big bodies standing awful close together. It's just, it's just tough to get in there and make stops behind the line of scrimmage. So Darren Clark stays on the field. He's relieved. He's got a fresh set of downs. First and 10 near the 35. And a nice play fake at that. The southpaw looks to throw with backside pressure, and it goes down. Holding call as well as coming through for Sanders, Brad Collins. He's a freshman from Raleigh. The 
options, all with North Carolina State. Originally had good time. That's a coverage sack, Todd. He had good time early after the play fake. Nice job by Brad Collins. He's in there, as Dr. Punch reported earlier, Mike Harrison out of the ball game with an injury. Brad Collins, a redshirt freshman. Referee Tom Quinn with the holding call. The state wants to move him back, so first down all over again. Take a look again. Here's Collins down at the bottom, number 93. Watch him work on the backup tight end. That's Brandon Mann, and he just doesn't give up on the play. Mann actually does a nice job. But credit Collins for staying with the play, and as, Tate, as Clark tried to release out of the pocket, Collins was there with the shoestring tackle. Good work, good hustle by Brad Collins. First and 25 now, back to the 19. He wanted the draw right up the middle. It wasn't available, and he's down to the 22. So Clark a little indecisive and a gain of three. Well, Ken Pettis, the defensive coordinator, told us they didn't match up physically, so they were going to gamble, and you talked about putting eight men up there. He also added, though, at the tail end of telling us about what they had to do defensively, that they did not have a complicated passing attack, and that's why he felt like he could take some chances. Yeah, this was a, a quarterback draw all the way. It did not fool North Carolina State. Clark does a nice job eluding the first defender, but Carl Reeves is there to finish off the play. Good aggressive pursuit by the Wolfpack defense. Second 22, the pitch on the option is Michael Davis. And he's across the 30 to the 31. But still, third and long coming up on the next snap for backup quarterback Darren Clark. Well, tomorrow it all starts with Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James from our studios in Bristol now as they take a look back at the Orange Bowl, look ahead to the Rose Bowl. That's tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, game day, College Bowl game day. And then at 11 a.m. Eastern, 24th rank. Blue Devils up to taking it on for the Big Ten, the Wisconsin Badgers. Look forward to maybe try to get the ball to the tailback. Kevin McGee, number 21, is a redshirt freshman. They bring in on third down situations. Pressure, they set up the screen. It is McGee, and he breaks the tail for the first down. Down the sideline he goes. As Ricky Bell pops it out the play. Four yards on the pass and the run. What a Great call. way to take off pressure off of your quarterback. You just slip the tail back out. He's showing block, but he's going to him all the way. He eludes one tackle, and then you can see the open field running ability that McGee has. That's why they like to get him in the ballgame. He's not going to get to run much in their normal offense with Bowie and Davis, so they bring him in on third down and like to throw him the football. Watch Carl Reeves working on the outside against Jesse James. They just take him out around the pocket in time for the completion. So first down at the 25 of North Carolina State. A big hole over the left side for Michael Davis. He gets six on first down. And that's what they have to shut down is the big yardage on first down. They need to force Mississippi State in the second and nine, second and eight situations. They have not been able to accomplish that all that often so far. We talked about Fred McCrary and what kind of a blocker he is. Take a look on the fullback. Just kind of doesn't get a physical block there, but he gets in the right position, and he keeps the outside linebacker, Ed Gallon, from making the play. Well, Mississippi State has been able to move the ball on all three of their possessions tonight. They have stalled, though, deep inside. North Carolina State territory every time. There's McCrary. And the fullback is a yard short of the first down to 16. Not a very complicated scheme right now for Jackie Sherrill's group. And see, this is the beauty of, of the philosophy of bringing your backup quarterback in. Right now, Darren Clark is very comfortable in the game. It wasn't a three-and-out series. They were able to make some plays. Now, he's very comfortable. So when he goes back to the sideline, he will have gotten hit a couple times. He will have played at game speed. And if anything would happen to Derek Tate later in the game, he's already been in there. He knows what the game's all about. So this is a, this is a great move for that young man. You brought up the key phrase, though, game speed. That's right. No substitute for that. Here we go on third and a yard. Can they keep the drive alive? There are modes of motion. He's Davis. He's got that first down the 11 yard line. So Mississippi State making it all the way back from first and 25 of their own 19. Now has it first and 10 outside of the 11 of North Carolina State. 
They're running behind the left side, behind Jesse James, the left tackle, and the fullback, their lead blocker. There he is, Fred McCrary. Watch as they lead this play to the left, behind the big tight end Watkins and Jesse James. There's McCrary right at the point of attack, working on Ed Gallon again. And I'll tell you what, McCrary, you've got to stay low to take on that block. Single set as they put McCrary in the wing back. It is Davis, he stays in for the entire drive. He'll get it with good penetration. And they put down short of the 10 for a gain of only a yard. Some of the best penetration we've seen so far from the defensive front of North Carolina State. And Gallon, the outside linebacker, one of the first ones in there for defensive coordinator Ken Pettis. Is he ever doing the job on the sideline right now? Yeah, the Bulldogs, like he's already played. Bulldogs tried to go with the counter trap play that time. They pulled the backside tackle in the center, but the, the way to offset that play is you got to get penetration into the backfield, and, and the Wolfpack were able to do that and really disrupt the timing on that play. The Bulldogs have stalled now in the previous two drives. They're looking at the second and nine. Mississippi State already with 105 yards rushing. Davis following his blocking, breaking tackles. He's in. Touchdown, Mississippi State. Good blocking by the wide receiver on that play. Take a look at Moles. They like to put him in motion down in the red zone, and he's a big, strong guy. 6'3", 205 pounds. He just gets enough of a block to allow his tailback, Davis, to come to the inside and get in the end zone. Tim Rogers in for the point after your try. Finally, Mississippi still on their third drive of the contest. Gets into the end zone. A 10-yard run for Michael Davis. And the Bulldogs have the lead once again by three with 7.29 left in the first half. Three possessions for Mississippi State. Three scores for the Bulldogs. And the defensive coordinator of North Carolina State, Ken Pettis, trying to rally his troops right now. Very early in the game, 7.29 left in the first half. And we look back at that touchdown run. Well, take a look at the block of these two guys here, the left tackle and the tight end. Watkins is going to take his man and end up down here somewhere, and Jesse James is going to bury his man. These two guys are going to be playing on Sundays next year. Watch the technique. Watch the tight end drive his man seven yards down the field. That's Carl Reeves, one of the best defenders on this football team, did not have a chance working against the tight end, Kendall Watkins. 78 yards on the drive, and don't forget what... Ken Pettis really wanted a first and 25. Mississippi State battled back from at their own 19-yard line with that big third down draw or screen that was a not much of a screen play. So now Russell kick it away. It'll be taken by Whitted. He's a track man. He's won a 10.13, 100 meters. An NC State record. He's throttled that time. Though. 28. Still solid field position for North Carolina State. The third time now they've had the ball. And we're going to see the backup quarterback for State. Just, and I guess I can't say State the rest of the night, can I? <laughs> for North Carolina State, that is Jeff Bender taking over. He's a senior from Pittsburgh. Goes at 6'4", 210 pounds. He's got great size. He's got great leadership skills, too. I saw this guy come in the second half of the ball game against Virginia. His team was losing 19-7 to and led him on four second-half scoring drives. He's a great leader. The team really respects him as a quarterback. Bennett over there. Only a gain of a yard on the carry. Well, the backup quarterback can throw it well, but the one thing they liked about the backup quarterback, that he's always been there for spring drills. The starting quarterback, Terry Harvey, has always been with the Wolfpack baseball squad. So, so much experience for Jeff Bender in his Wolfpack career. These guys are, are competitors, uh, first and foremost, but they're also very good friends. They're roommates. Yes. They live together, but they uh, they both want to be the guy that's pulling the trigger, and, and that's the way you would expect it to be. If they didn't feel that way, you'd have to question uh, whether they're playing the right sport or the right position. Second and a long eight. And the ball batted up. Is it taken? Yes. An interception. Cut it up with a James Holloway. Was it Holloway? Miss 
Mississippi State coming up with the pick. Well, the only way for this ball to bounce that high is for it to hit a helmet. It had to hit something extremely hard. It had to hit a helmet to go that high up in the air. Actually, it looked like 26 Gumina, maybe. The three-step drop throw. The ball had to hit a helmet. As we take a look at the end of this play, look at Dwayne Curry. He's fighting for it. Gamina's fighting for it. That's good work by the Bulldog defense, finding the football on the deflection. Now they've got it first and 10 at the 26. Tate's back in there, and Tate feels the heat. The sack is there. Coming up with it for the Wolfpack, Mark Lawrence, a sophomore from Wayne, New Jersey. Well, the very top of the telecast, you said they couldn't afford any turnovers, and that's the first 30 overall. And 15 in their three losses. Yeah, that, that's the number that stands out. They averaged five turnovers in those games that they lost to Florida State, North Carolina, and the other game they lost to was uh, Louisville. They just can't afford to give up the football like that. And, and they already have trouble stopping the running game. They want to force Mississippi State to drive the full length of the field. You don't want to give them the short field to work with on the turnover. They're on the option with the back. the quarterback on that side the first one over let's head back downstairs and check in with dr jerry punch chair we mentioned earlier that mississippi state was going to two platoon some on the offense that's exactly what nc state is doing defensively right now they have the second string defensive line in basically that is two freshmen and a sophomore up front you got uh, freshman george williams sophomore mark lawrence and freshman brad collins trying to spell some of the senior players back up there with that size up front for Mississippi State, and especially the way Mississippi State wants to rotate a good 20, 21 players in offensively as well. they try to wear down NC State. Tate with time, and overshoots a receiver. He had him available. It was Chris Jones. Check that, not 17. Going after the wide receiver on that play, Gerald Daniels, who goes out in their three wide receiver set. Well, Derek Tate was looking downfield for the bigger play, but he had Eric Moulds is going to come underneath on the little smash route as he comes off the line of scrimmage in the zone defense. If I'm Derek Tate, I want to get this guy the football because even though he catches it short of the first down, he has the ability to make people miss and turn that short catch into a big play. Your percentages are going to be pretty good if you get him the football. He'll make the first down for you. This is a new career best try for the place kicker, Tim Rogers. The line drive is wide left. It was a 49-yard try. His career best has been from 43 out. That came against Memphis. And we've got a time out of the field, so they can't capitalize on the turnover, starting with the ball, the NC State 26, and the Wolfpack get it back when we return. Five possessions and five scores in this 95 Peach Bowl, and surprisingly, they get the ball at the NC State 26 after the interception, and Mississippi State can't do a thing with it as we look back at that pick. Well, take a look at Larry Williams now. He's going to come across the line of scrimmage, number 78. Gets good penetration. The ball is going to hit him right in the head, and the ball takes off off his helmet, and good reaction as everybody's trying to find the football. I wonder if Williams gets an assist for that in the little asterisks in the scorebook. Hockey terminology? <laughs> I'll tell you what, North Carolina State really dodged a bullet because Mississippi State has scored 114 points off of turnovers this year. They're very opportunistic. They got away with one that time. Great news for Wolfpack fans for Maine. Stevens, the true freshman, back in there and has it in the toss. Hits the hole in a hurry. But he has belted immediately just short of the 35. A gain of close to four for Stevens. As we learned from Dr. Jerry Punch on the sideline, a rib injury. They took a look at it. Some more protective gear for him. And fortunately now for NC State, he is back in there. He's from Greer, South Carolina. Close to 800 yards on the ground during the regular season. Interesting guy. Very quiet, soft-spoken kind of guy. Likes to write poetry in his spare time. He's a very mature young man. Yeah, he is. Second and six now. They stay in the same formation. Stevens carrying blockers and tacklers with him. Close to the first down. Oh, one of the real leaders offensively, Eddie Goins. He has been out with a knee injury. They suffered about three games before the end of the regular season. First team all ACC in each of the last two seasons. All-time pass receiving leader for yeah. North Carolina State. A huge blow not to have him here tonight. 
the amazing thing about Goins and his numbers this year, even though he missed the last three games, he still was the team's leading receiver. He had 16 more catches than the number two receiver for this football team. He was definitely the go-to guy. Take a look at his numbers on the season. Three touchdowns, 624 yards. I mean, he was he was the main receiver for this team. And, and credit Michael Kane for not allowing his team to, to lose confidence offensively. When they lose Goins, other people have stepped up. Adrian Hill has stepped up. Mike Guffey, those guys have come in and played very well the last three weeks. And Eddie Goins, it's just a shame that he doesn't get to play the, the end of his senior year. He's had a great career for the Wolfpack. They're coming up just inches short of the first down. It'll be third and about six, eight inches with 426 left of the first half. And now it would seem as it's imperative for North Carolina State to put together a long sustained drive like we were talking about at the top of the telecast. Their defensive unit has been on the field a long time in the first half. Some long drives by Mississippi State. And his defense did a great job in the sudden change situation. After the turnover, they came in three plays. They forced the field goal. They need the rest now. The offense has to take up the burden here. Third and inches. King is the fullback in front of Stevens. The quarterback sneak. And it looks like Harvey has it. He does. And check that Jeff Bender. The quarterback in there still. The senior from Pittsburgh stretched out. And those three extra inches had to pay off on that quarterback sneak. He goes at 6-4 as opposed to Harvey who goes at 6-1. First down, North Carolina State. What a luxury to have two quarterbacks that have both thrown for over 2,000. Bender for better than 2,200. Now Harvey over 3,800 as you look at Terry Harvey on the sideline. He's pulling for his roommate. There's no doubt about that. His teammates, but he can't wait to get back out. First and 10 from the 42. Going for the bundle. He's got Hill wide open. And he threw it up for grabs. Did Hill ever beat his man? When you're throwing a deep route and your man is beat, you've got to go ahead and get the ball up in a hurry. Hill's coming back, got a little smile on his face because he had his man beat right away. He had run by Walt Harris, and if you're Bender, you want to get that ball up in a hurry. A little bit of pressure, but look at Hill. He had run by Charlie Davidson, number five, and when he had to stop, he lost control of the football, lost his concentration on the ball, but he ran right by Charlie Davidson, and if you're a quarterback and you've got a fast wide receiver, he's beat, boom, get the ball up in the air in a hurry, let your guy run under it. Try not to make him stop. Unfortunately for Jeff Bender, that wobbled as soon as it left his hands. Second and ten now. The tight end, Dallas Dickerson, they look for him the first time tonight, and they find him for a first down to the 46 of Mississippi State. Sit back down to the sideline with Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, throughout Jeff Bender's career at NC State, he's had a problem with pinched nerves in his neck. And one way to solve that, if you're a linebacker or a defensive back, is to wear what they call a cowboy collar. This collar helps prevent extension of the neck and thus pinching the nerve. But if you're a quarterback, it creates a problem. You can't turn your head. Well, this is what he's wearing. It's the same collar. They have trimmed the sides of this cowboy collar so he can turn his helmet back and forth and be able to see laterally. They've also trimmed part of the sleeve of the collar so he can raise his right hand and throw. Without this collar, Bender would not be able to play. I can see. The fullback. Carlos King into the secondary. Another first down for North Carolina State. 17 yards on King's first carry of Hunter for Google, North Carolina. Is this a noisy building or is it just me? What atmosphere? This is an excellent play call on the offensive side by Ted Kane. Take a look as they fake the toss now. The linebackers are going to flow with the toss, and then they're going to give it right back to the fullback. Watch the linebackers flow with the toss fake. They think Stevens is going to get the ball. Curry takes himself right out of the play. They hand it back to the fullback, Carlos King, and it's a big play out of your fullback in this drive. First 2 10 for the Mississippi State 29. Fullback whipped the ball down by three. Stevens. Stumbled time as soon as he got the handoff. Never looked like he had any rhythm from the outset that time. And in all fairness to Tremaine Stevens, he, he realistically has to be thinking about the rib injury a little bit right now or the, the, the pain that he has. He's got to think about covering up the football. So those are things that are weighing on his mind as well as trying to read the holes and find out where to make those 
cut. So he just has to kind of get back into the rhythm of the game after being on the sidelines for a while. Wolfpack already well within the range of Steve Benetik. He's hit 17 of 19 this year. And he's already got one tonight, a 45-yarder. Second and 10 for the 29. Check that. Make it second and 11. They pushed it back to the 30. Coming up at the half, and we've got 205 and counting left of the first 30 here. We'll go back to the studio. Join Chris Fowler with the Duracell halftime report. A look at the national championship picture. Highlights from the wild card games today in the NFL. And the best plays of the bowl week. All at the half with Chris Fowler. 13 to 10 lead for the Bulldogs. But Mississippi State trying to hold here on a third and two. Pursuit by Johnny Harris, the strong safety to deny him, I believe. And it looks like he's injured short of the first down. Nice job in the secondary. Watches the option, comes down the line. The wide receiver was going to try to crack back on the inside. Watches the pitch comes to Stevens. There's Guffey, number four. Can't get the block on the strong safety, Johnny Harris. Then the other corner, Walt Harris, is there to make another hit. I think they stopped him short. That's good work by the strong safety, Johnny Harris, fighting off the block of the wide receiver, Guffey. Short by just a few inches. Very interesting to see that last replay because they really don't look at the quarterback of North Carolina State as much of a threat to run the ball in the option. They want to make him get rid of the football, and, and Jeff Bender doesn't want to run the ball. He knows his best option is to get it to Stevens, let him get to the corner of the defense, and use his speed and his acceleration, but that time just good defensive uh, discipline on the part of the strong safety Harris. Jackie Sherrill brings in some extra bodies. As they said, put him in the box because Mike O'Kane, his counterpart on the opposite side, gambling early. He is going to go for it on fourth and inches as opposed to bringing Vitek out there for the field goal drive. And look at Mississippi State has done on fourth downs this year. Best in the SEC at stopping the opposition. And they got him with the shift on the punt situation on fourth down. Look for maybe another use of the snap count here to draw him off sides and get the easy first down. They've got both fullbacks in there in the eye, Brown and Carlos King. of a surge there for Bender. James Greer, number 90, did a great job slipping to the inside and getting penetration. He made the big hit. Bender hesitated a second just to see where the opening was. And there was a good collision there made by James Greer. When you're running a quarterback sneak, sometimes you just hesitate a half a second to see where the, the opening is, but James Greer did a great job getting the penetration and making the big hit right at the line of scrimmage. This should be very close. Does he have it? Yes. Just barely. It's about as close as he gets. It does not get much closer than that. The drive is still alive. That started back at the North Carolina State 31. And don't forget what the defensive unit did to stop Mississippi State after a turnover and give it back to the offensive unit. Now they've held on to it for the last four minutes. 64 seconds left in the half. As Mississippi State has a three-point lead. And we've got a ton on the field. So we'll be right back to Peach Bowl 95. First half of this 95 Peach Bowl game. And welcome back once again, Joel Myers, Todd Blackledge, and Dr. Jerry Punch. A three-point lead in jeopardy right now for Mississippi State. And did NC State's defensive unit ever need this drive from their offensive group? Yeah, they get a nice break before they go into halftime here. They came in, they played great in the sudden change situation. Now the, uh, now the burden falls on the Mississippi State defense to come up and make a couple plays. And remember, this drive is with the backup quarterback, Jeff Bender. They run. Rissett in motion. The shotgun package. That's Adrian Hill. He's got it 
down to the 14. Great open field tackle by Charlie Davidson. Really did a nice job breaking down at the point of the tackle, holding him in bounds, not letting him get away. That's good work. I tell you what, you, you are playing on an island when you're a cornerback. When you're out there with that wide field, I mean, if you don't make the tackle, he's in the end zone. Anxious moments as we just saw on the sideline for the other quarterback, Terry Harvey. Great support, great representation by the fans, alums of NC State and Mississippi State. They are to be congratulated. We're the 95 Peach Bowl at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. And what an atmosphere as it's a three-point lead for Mississippi State. Final minute of the first half, we head back downstairs to Jerry Punt. Jerry? Guys, Jeff Bender coming into football game is by design. NC State planned to play of every three or four series. Now, I spoke with Terry Harvey last night, and although he and Bender are roommates and best friends, Terry understood the philosophy since Bender's a senior, but didn't have to like it. He said, hey, my philosophy is give me the football and let me win the football game. I want to play every down, but he certainly understands them playing the senior back up there. Have to like his competitive fire. Second and six now inside the 15, Carlos King. Flag down to the play, and they may have gotten Ryan Fitzgerald on a holding call. The other running back. So they come up short of the first down by a couple of yards. Ryan Fitzgerald was trying to block the backer, Mike James, on the play. Mike James, as we mentioned earlier, not a very big guy, 6'1", 214 pounds, but he's got great quickness, and he reads plays very well. And that time, Brian Fitzgerald got caught with the hold. First penalty on North Carolina State. And with just under eight minutes left, Miami with a three-point lead over the number one team in the nation, Nebraska. At 10-7, to seven, and Chris Fowler is going to update you on that situation with the Duracell halftime report. There's 45 seconds left in the first 30 minutes of play of the 95 Peach Bowl. They scored in the first five possessions. Three for Mississippi State, for two for North Carolina State. And now, North Carolina State accomplishing this drive with their backup quarterback. And well, if you're Jeff Bender, the one thing you don't want to do here is you don't want to give up a sack. You do not want to take a sack in this situation because right now, you're in field goal range for your kicker. Second and 15. They've got early movement again. And that's got to be tough on a defensive unit because now all of a sudden the other quarterback's in there. They've had a couple of series to hear him, but there's a change in cadence. You know, the difference, though, is they're able to get the offsides out of the shotgun now. Wait for the call here. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense. The difference is in this drive, they're going into the North Carolina State end zone where their fans are. Before, when they were in the shotgun, they were going the opposite way. They had to use the foot signal. They couldn't use the vocal verbal sound uh, snap count. This time, going into their own end zone, they can use the verbal snap count, and they can use it effectively to get the offsides penalty. Red to our right, maroon to our left. So many fans from both schools here. That's a Georgia Dome. They're on Griffey Emotion, second and 10 now. Time for Harvey, but he's hit as he released it. And Wesley Lisi forced that play, the outside linebacker. Another look at the pressure from the outside. Take a look at Lisi. Here he is down at the bottom. Watch him get the quick upfield rush as he works against the right tackle. That's Heath Woods. Just too quick for Woods. Woods does a nice job not giving up on the play, but Lisi really took a good angle to the quarterback, got in and disrupted that throw. Now it goes back to a situation of Bender not trying to force the play and also trying to avoid a sack. So Vita can get on and at least tie it up with 17 seconds left in the half. This is the third and 10 coming up at the 19. And he's got the one timeout, so even if he throws it in the middle of the field and it doesn't get to the end zone, he's okay. And they get heat on the quarterback once again. And Harvey threw it away. Or check that Jeff Bender, of course, threw it away. The backup quarterback. Good decision, though, with early pressure. Jeff Bender may not have the same skills and abilities that Terry Harvey has in terms of being a thrower, but he's a good leader, and for the most part, he has made good decisions during his four-year career. That time, it wasn't open. He made the smart move. Throw it away. Let your kicker come in and tie the ball game up for halftime. And it's going to be a 36-yard try for 
Steve Vitek. He's already hit from 45 yards away. He's 17 of 19 on the year now. Out of the hold of Addis. They almost got a piece of it, but Vitek ties it up. It is fitting that it's even now with eight seconds left in the half because both teams have done an outstanding job offensively. Most situations you'd think right now that, well, the half's over, you can go in and, and start thinking about the second half, but you've got to kick the ball to Eric Molds one more time. You better not give up on this play. Even though there's eight seconds left, it may be the last play of the half. You better make sure you're, you're disciplined in your kickoff coverage team right now. forget tomorrow it all begins at 10 a.m. Eastern time with Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James. They'll be back at our studios in Bristol taking a look back at the Orange Bowl, looking ahead of the Rose Bowl as well. That is College Bowl game day. And then just one hour later, 11 a.m. Eastern time, the Hall of Fame in Tampa, Florida, the Hall of Fame Bowl. Duke matching up with the Big Ten rep, the Wisconsin Badgers. Close to capacity. Georgia Dome holds 72,000. They're right about 71,000 in Atlanta tonight. They have not been able to get Molds all that involved in the offense tonight. I think that's one of the first things that Jackie Sherrill will address with his team when they go into the locker room. We've got to get this guy to touch the football. They gave it to him one time as a runner. He's touched it as a kickoff returner, but he's not caught a pass yet. And that's the thing they've got to do. Somehow, some way, they've got to get him the football. Somebody from Mississippi State have to climb the football, and they do finally inside their own 30. Five seconds left in the half, but that could have been a disaster had it not been covered with the leg that Vitatik has, the place kicker. So they have points now from both quarterbacks, the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. RV talking to Bender. She came off. Yeah, that's a, that's a great relationship that they have. And, you know, the backup quarterback or the guy who's actually standing on the sideline, whichever one, he can help the guy who's in the game. You know, everything happens so fast in front of your face when you're playing. The guy who's standing off, kind of the uninvolved third party, maybe sometimes can read the defense a little better, help his partner out when he comes off to the sideline. One snap, and that'll do it. We've come to the conclusion of the first half of the 1994 Five Peach Bowl game. Georgia Dome and Water for a certain minutes of play. It's all even at 13. Now let's check in with Chris Fowler for the Duracell Halftime Reports. Joel, thank you. SEC and ACC deadlock at halftime. Coming up with the Duracell Halftime Report, we'll update the Orange Bowl where the national championship will be won or lost tonight. Penn State and their fans, happy so far. We'll get the latest on the Rose Bowl, plus NFL highlights from this afternoon. When we continue, Lee Corso and Craig James will join me. This halftime report is presented by Duracell. <laughs> Happy New Year. Welcome to the halftime show, the first bowl game of 1995. We have brought Lee Corso and Craig James back with me from Miami to our football headquarters. In case you weren't aware of it, an Orange Bowl is also going on this evening. Miami and Nebraska battling. The Huskers trying to win the first national championship for Tom Osborne. And Certain points will be brought out all week, coming to bear early on. It is 10-7. The Hurricanes have the lead at this point. They jumped out to a 10-0 lead, an early field goal, then the 97-yard touchdown drive following an interception by Tommy Frazier, a touchdown pass for Frank Costa, who is 7 of 10 for 131 yards and that one touchdown. Nebraska answering as Frazier was pulled after the first couple of series. He was 1 for 3 with an interception. Brooke Behringer came in through a touchdown pass. It is 10-7 midway in the second quarter. Lee, so far you've been very impressed with the game plan of Dennis Erickson. Oh, Chris, it's brilliant. Miami started off the game perfect. They got three-step drops by Frank Costa, Throwing a ball high to those receivers against those short Nebraska corners. Now, Nebraska's made a smart move. They put Brooke Beringer in there to throw the ball. The only way Nebraska's going to beat Miami in that orange bowl is throw the football. Well, Tom Osborne doesn't put him in an awkward situation with a play call there. And th the things that I've noticed in this ball game, Warren Sapp, the outstanding defensive lineman at Miami, he started the game thinking about the offensive line at Nebraska. He's changed his tune. He's following the football now. 
Lawrence Phillips is running the ball extremely hard. And the other thing that I noticed, Miami does not have a running game right now, and I think that will hurt Miami before this game is over with. Nebraska's defense starting to play a little bit better now midway in the second quarter, but it is tough to spot the Hurricanes at 10 nothing lead at any point in the game and come back and win in the Orange Bowl. Watching that game intently, of course, out in Pasadena, or parts thereby, they've gone to an undisclosed location to get ready for the Rose Bowl. Penn State, their title hopes almost certainly depending on a Miami victory tonight. With the latest in that ball game and a look at some of the matchups that have not gotten that much attention, here's Steve Cyphers. Chris, in Pasadena, most of the talk this week is focused on Penn State's explosive offense and Oregon's game green defense. But there's a theory going around that it's the other matchup, Oregon's offense against the Nittany Lions defense, that could determine the winner in this one. We feel some some pressure to keep the ball away from Penn State and also I think some pressure to score some points and I you know that's nothing new I think we found ways to do that and I think our players are excited about the opportunity to show the world basically what type of offense we have we will not score a lot of points against Oregon nobody has nobody has I, I'm not I'm not envisioning it I, I think we got to play great defense to win joining me now Auburn coach Terry Bowden and coach does this hold water could it come down to the Oregon offense against the Penn State defense well Steve I think you're right you know if Oregon has the game they want to have and their defense is able to slow down Penn State's offense the burden falls right back on Oregon's offense they have got to score points they've got to score a lot of them you can't settle for field goals you can't worry about time of possession you've got to score touchdowns are there any holes in the Penn State defense well you know I think if there's a flaw in Penn State's bid for a national championship it's in their defensive statistics they've given up 387 yards a game 20 points a game these are not championship numbers look at last the last three years national championships Florida State Alabama and Miami all three teams led the nation in scoring defense giving up 13 points a game good news for Penn State is that the defense is as healthy as it's been since the first game of the season. Back to you, Chris. Had a lot of problems with the health of those defensive tackles. That could be a plus to get them back. Lee, what about the effects of this Orange Bowl game tonight in analyzing how Penn State performs tomorrow? No effect at all. Penn State is a great football team, well coached by Paterno. They'll play well. They'll win this ball game because Paterno will become the first football coach to win the four major bowls in college football history because of tradition. Will it be the seventh team to finish the season with an unblemished record? But the fourth not to get a national title. We'll have to wait and see what unfolds in Miami. Meanwhile, in New Orleans, the development that affects the Sugar Bowl matchup between the Gators and the Seminoles, two Florida players have been suspended. Anthony Riggins, a junior reserve linebacker, and Darren Hambrick, a sophomore nickelback guy who does play a lot in pass coverage, both were involved in a fight on the team meal last evening. They have been suspended and sent home. Steve Spurrier says he is embarrassed by the incident. What about that? Hambrick, a guy that against FSU could have been important. Well, I think it's important because of the Florida State pass game out of the backfield toward Dunn Rock Preston, and that really hurt Florida's defense in their last meeting. And there was a 200 yards passing that was involved in the last three touchdown drives. 100 of those yards went to Rock Preston and Ward Dunn. You've got to have Florida linebackers that can get in the flat and cover these running backs because they're dangerous when they get at the open field. And Hamburg is a small, quick guy who can do a better job than most guys of covering those scat backs. One coaching note, ESPN has learned that Watson Brown, the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma, will be named head coach at Alabama Birmingham on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. UAB going from Division I AA to Division I A in 1996. Brown, of course, the former head coach at Vanderbilt Rice and at Cincinnati. Coming in next on the Duracell Halftime Report, we'll shift the focus to the NFL. Highlights of the two wild card games today, the Browns and Pats, the Vikings and Bears. Will we continue? This halftime report is presented by Duracell Batteries. The copper top tops them all. After 30 minutes at the Georgia Dome, the Bulldogs and the Wolf Pack deadlocked at 13. Meanwhile, in the NFL this afternoon, a couple of wild card playoff games. Coaching matchup, Patriots and Browns involving Bill Parcells and his protege, Bill Belichick. By the lake, the Browns took a 3-0 first quarter lead. Then Drew Bledsoe pressured, rolls out, finds Leroy Thompson. He takes it in from 13 yards out. The nice hurdle move, 7-3 pats. But Vinny brings the Browns back, rolling right. Eventually, Mark Carrier gets open. Vinny flips it to him, a 91-yard touchdown drive, 10-7 Cleveland. Tied at 10 in the third. Leroy Horde, rumbling in from 10 yards out, 17-10 Cleveland. Bledsoe, 
struggled. Looking for a big play, picked off by Pepper Johnson. Three picks on the day for Bledsoe. After a Matt Barr field goal, cut it 20 to 13 in the fourth quarter. The Patriots on the onside kick. Where were the Browns over there? New England recovers, but Bledsoe stymied on fourth and 10. Incomplete. Vinny gets his first playoff win ever. 20 to 13. Cleveland advancing. They will play at Pittsburgh Saturday. Bledsoe, the three interceptions. Vinny, 20 of 30. The Pats, 57 yards rushing as they lose their first postseason game since the Pony. And the Pats lost to the Bears. Meanwhile, Warren Moon hosting the Bears. Third quarter, Bears up 14-9. Raymond Harris takes the handoff. Breaks through the arms of several Minnesota would-be tacklers. 30-yard touchdown run, 21-9. Dennis Green team down. Early fourth. Bears and the Vikes, 22. Walsh to Jeff Graham, who gets in the end zone. 28-12 is the lead. Vikes try to come back. Moon, Andrew Jordan. They miss the two-point try. It's 28-18 Chicago. Next drive, Moon to Amp Lee. Coughs up the football. Rick Minifield scoops it up. They don't catch him. Bears, 35-18 as they beat a Dennis Green coach Vikings team for the first time in seven tries. Steve Walsh, superb, 15 of 23, a couple of touchdowns. Moon, 29 of 52. The Bears visit the 49ers on Saturday. To college basketball, Kentucky and Louisville. For years, they didn't play in either football or basketball. Now they play in both sports, and this afternoon's game was a classic. Denny Crum trying to snap the four-game losing streak to the Wildcats. Gets some help from Samaki Walker, the freshman setter, rejecting shots all over the place. 11, a school record. Kentucky down early. Walter McCarty, the spin and the foul. They trail by only two late in the first half. Tick Rogers, Jason Osborne with the dunk. Louisville had a four-point lead at the break. The Cats hang in there. Tony Delp nails the three. The deficit is four. But then B.J. Flynn, his dad used to play at Kentucky, drives, hits the shot. He's fouled a six-point Cardinal lead. Then Dewan Wheat, big jumper in the final couple of minutes. And Louisville hangs on. They win it 88-86. For the first time in five years, they beat their in-state rivals. Walker, the triple-double, 14 points, 10 rebounds to go with those 11 blocks. The Cards as a team block 17 shots. That is a school record. Kentucky, just 34% from the floor. Tomorrow on ESPN, following college game day at 10 a.m., Wisconsin and Duke meet in the Hall of Fame Bowl at 11 a.m. Eastern time. For a preview, here's Mike Adamley. Thanks, Chris. When Duke meets Wisconsin in tomorrow's Hall of Fame Bowl here in Tampa Stadium, it'll be a matchup of contrasting styles yet similar stories. Last year, Wisconsin was college football Cinderella team. Barry Alvarez, consensus national coach of the year as he guided the Badgers to a Big Ten championship and a first-ever victory in the Rose Bowl. This year, it was Duke's turn to confound the experts. And the Blue Devils' dramatic turnaround, nothing short of astounding. More wins, more points, more takeaways. ACC coach of the year, Fred Goldsmith, doesn't like the label miracle worker. Instead, he prefers to give credit to a group of players who shared his dream that Duke could win and win now. They were receptive because they were ready to make a commitment when, when some kids who, who had come in to win and then had lost for a few years, they said, hey, you know, let's put the bickering aside. We blame this coach. We blame that coach. Hey, let's be receptive. Let's make a commitment and see what happens. Okay, so it's not for the national championship, but don't tell the players that. Seniors want to go out winners. Underclassmen are looking for a springboard for next season. It's Duke versus Wisconsin. Kickoff at 11 o'clock Eastern time. We'll see you then. Halftime of the Peach Bowl. Welcome back to the Duracell Halftime Report. Updating the score from the Orange Bowl. No change. Now 2.40 to play in the first half. Miami continues to lead Nebraska. Frank Costa, after the touchdown pass, has cooled off in the second quarter. Just 3 of 8 for 22 yards. We'll hear from Lee Corso and Craig James on their special memories of the bowl season so far, and you'll want to hear them. But first, the highlights and the lowlights of what's already been an eventful bowl season, 1994-95. He threw a touchdown pass this year, and he's got another one. He's tough. Watch this. One of the three things the Bishops that didn't allow to happen. Two huge third down plays already. But the end zone, is it caught in bounds? Yes. Touchdown, Johnston. Not just 
flip. On the play action, got somebody in his face, got a receiver wide open, Kent. Gatewood, circus catch, hangs on, and the Rebels score once again. Stanisic with nowhere to go, ball in the air, Watkins has it. Oh, he lost it. Ball three on the goal line, and let's see. Texas says it has a touchdown. Indeed, touchdown, Buckhorn. Tennessee, flag on the play. Peyton Manning up the field. Oh, what a hit put on Kendrick Jones. Simpson has it blocked again. It's, when it's a high trajectory. Look at it right there. I've got it. I've got it. How in the world? There's where he stole it out of his hands when he was coming down. Again, I've got it. Oh, that's an amazing play. It almost... Ten Wolverines come out. High snap. He had it blocked. Stuck right where he tried to kick it. Bentley running from the shadows of his own goal line in his block. Offense is making most of those best plays, but the defenses have dominated the bowl so far. If there's one trend we can talk about with the exception of the Sun Bowl. What about your favorite memory of the bowl week so far? Well, so far it's been in Coconut Grove doing that thing. YMCA. What the? What was it, what was it, where was that place? Anyhow, you and I did that thing. Unfortunately, I was with you, Hal, at the moon. Baby. All right, that was fun. <laughs> what about you? Let the missing member of the uh, village people, of course. Yeah. <laughs> there was some serious moment, so I really look forward to going out and meeting the players media day because both teams were extremely different. Nebraska very serious. The offensive line posing for pictures, signing autographs, and Miami out there loosey-goosey. My favorite memory, I think, is the Wiegert family, Zach Wiegert's parents, Nebraska great offensive lineman, eating the Miami good luck cake yes. after a Miami party in, in Dan Marino's bar. They had left it. The Wiegert family just dug right in and carved out the Miami part of the cake and chowed down. But so far, it's the uh, Hurricanes chowing on the Cornhuskers at this point. We're going to come back more in the Duracell Halftime Report after this. It's all even at the Georgia Dome. 13-13, Michael Davis, one of the touchdowns for the Bulldogs, 43 yards rushing in the first half. We continue with the Duracell Halftime Report. Want to remind you to set the alarm clock early. Join us at a special time, January 2nd, College Game Day, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Part of it live from Miami, part of it from here. We'll also have a Rose Bowl report. Then it's Duke and Wisconsin. The Hall of Fame Bowl, you heard about that game earlier in our halftime, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And a reminder, later on this season, we'll have plenty of post-Orange Bowl coverage. Mike Tirico, post-game reaction. The regular sports news here from the studio right after our ball game. Greg, your thoughts on what might unfold in the Orange Bowl in the second half. They're going to halftime now. Miami continues to lead that ball game 10-7. I think Dennis Erickson has to be pretty pleased with the lead right now because he knows if his ball club can hang in there in the second half along with that crowd noise, he has a chance. I tell you who needs to hang in there the most, though, is Warren Sapp. They've been resting him a little bit, and he came back in and made an impact on, on Brooke Beringer throwing the ball. It's very important that Warren Sapp is fresh for that second half. In our game, our game, Mississippi State, Eric Moles. If they get him into the ball game, they'll win by two touchdowns. He's that good. He's a great receiver. All right, the second half upcoming from the Georgia Dome right after this. Joel, Todd, and Jerry will have it for you. We'll see you after the ball game with plenty of post-Orange Bowl coverage as we continue on ESPN. Happy New Year again. The second half from Atlanta next.
Welcome back once again to the 95 Peach Bowl game. All even after the first 30 minutes of play between the Bulldogs of Mississippi State and the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Welcome back once again to the Georgia Dome. Joel Myers along with Todd Blackleg. Plenty of offense early. In fact, first five possessions between the two teams, three for Mississippi State and two for North Carolina State, they found points. Yeah, both teams did a nice job balancing, throwing and running. Interestingly enough, in the first half, Mississippi State threw the ball for more yards than North Carolina State did. I expect that to change in the second half. Tough first half, though, for Mississippi State. They're going to look back on missed opportunities, especially when they got down to the red zone early. Yeah, well, that's been the trademark of North Carolina State's defense. They bend, but they don't break. Take a look at this play inside the 10-yard line. Little razzle-dazzle option. Get the quarterback on the corner, but a great tackle by the strong safety, Kenny Harris, starting his first game in a while. Good, sure tackling inside the 10-yard line. For Mississippi State, Eric Moulds did not have a real busy half in terms of catching the football, but he was still involved in their offense. Watch as he gets a key block on the outside on the touchdown run by Michael Davis. So Eric Moulds is a guy that, that really has to get more involved. Bruce Arians, will, I'm sure that he will find a way to get him the football. So take a look at the numbers, pretty even. The one turnover, we talked about North Carolina State not being able to turn the ball over. They really dodged a bullet after the Bender interception. But as you said, the most surprising aspect when we look at those numbers, more passing yardage for Mississippi State than North Carolina State over the first 30 minutes of play. And Terry Harvey really threw the ball pretty well when he was in the ball game. He was 5 of 7 in that first half. Jeff Bender was 3 of 7 with the one interception. So I would expect to see Terry Harvey get a, a lot more of the work here in the second half for the Wolfpack. We are ready now for the start of the second half of the 95 Peach Bowl game. What an entertaining first 30 minutes of play as Mateer is back deep once again. And they're going to bring it out surprisingly. Will be brought out for the mistake. Indecision at the outset for winning the freshman speedster, the former track star. And we go downstairs right away and check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, at halftime, I spoke with both coaches. First, Mississippi State's Jackie Sherrill said he was pleased with the play of his defense in the first half. He thinks they've got the rhythm of the NC State offense. They should play better in the second half. But offensively, very concerned about the lack of production in the red zone. That inside the 20-yard line. He said, look for us to try to use the middle of the field. NC State is rolling their linebackers and corners to the boundary. They're going to try to throw the ball to Moles and others down the center of the field. That's the Mississippi State locker room. I'll tell you what he said in NC State's locker room in just a moment. All right, Jerry, first and ten now for the Wolfpack. Terry Harvey back in there at quarterback along with the Rod Brown in the backfield and Tremaine Stevens. But NC State starting in a hole. They lose five on Wittig bringing it out. Otherwise, they had it at the 20-yard line. And after the play, pick, Harvey has plenty of time going back against the grain. For a first down, he could have had Dickerson or the whole blood threat, Adrian Hill, surprising yeah. on that decision a little bit. Well, he had two guys wide open, and, and credit Terry Harvey for the great ball fake. I mean, Mississippi State's defense never found the football. Watch the good fake to the fullback. It looked like an option. They came off the line. They did not show that action the entire first half. Goes to his underneath receiver, the tight end, Dallas Dickerson, and a nice play on first down. Now they're not in that hole again after the bad decision on the kickoff return. On the quick toss, following the block of the fullback, Brown, but not much available across the 33. They'll give him the 34 for a gain of three. And a look at the numbers of the charge for Tremaine Stevens. Well, as you can see, it's pretty balanced. They, they worked both sides of the offensive line with Tremaine Stevens. And the best news for Michael Kane and all Wolfpack fans all over the place is that these numbers are not final for the evening. He just added one more, and hopefully he'll be able to play the rest of this ball game. Nominal true freshman out of Greer, South Carolina. Opening minute of the second half, tied at 13. The fullback this time, Brown breaking tackles, did a good job to get positive yardage out of that. It looked like he was going to be dropped right at the line. But the sophomore, Lithonia, Georgia, spun free all the way to the 39. Short of the first down, still by a couple, though. You could see Dwayne Curry, the middle linebacker, encouraging uh, rather forcefully the rest of the front four for Mississippi State's defense. You know, it's amazing to see him as a sophomore be such a vocal leader on this defense. You don't start as a true freshman at middle linebacker in the Southeastern Conference if you're not a tough dude. Dwayne Curry is one tough customer, two-year starter at a very difficult position. So now third and two. They double up the wide receivers to the far side. And the option for Stevens, will they get there? No. 
slow down the quarterback Harris, and Gamina finished it off. Good tag team play there. Great job defending the option by Mississippi State. When you defend the option, it's all about assignment. Somebody has the back, somebody has the quarterback, and then you have to defend the pitch. Great job by Walt Harris keeping outside leverage, not letting the play get outside him. Curry, he had the quarterback, forces the quick pitch to Terry Harvey, and then just a little twist of the headgear there at the end of the play, just to let him know that he doesn't appreciate him running that option. It's your first punt of the game. You missed the first half. You missed a lot of entertaining offensive plays. As Watson's in, and Watson's got problems as it's blocked. Blocked by Bennett. It's loose in the end zone. And it looked like the Bulldogs came up with it. The free safety, Andre Bennett, blocked it. Touchdown, Mississippi State, making the safety. It was actually recovered. What a play back there by Adrian Hill to cover the ball and save a certain six points. Well, you're right, Joel. That is a heads-up play by Adrian Hill, but a great play for the special teams of Mississippi State as they really track down on that block punt. Take a look, it's right here, the second guy on the inside. That's who's gonna make the play. Andre Bennett, the starting free safety, slips right in between. They actually got pressure from three guys, but he was able to get the direct route to the throw, or to the punt. Now watch Hill, just a heads up play, covering this football. Actually had it, lost it. Take a look again as we see Bennett slip to the inside. It was a high snap. That threw off the timing of the punt and a great inside move by Andre Bennett. And actually, I think Todd the putter, yeah. Robson came back to help out and get it. Hill had it at first, and then Robson came back. So good heads-up play by him. Now a two-point lead for Mississippi State. Great work on the special teams from Jackie Sherrill's side. And now two and a half minutes into the third quarter. The Bulldogs with the lead at 15 to 13. So now punt coming up after the safety. A punt for Robson. And Mississippi State right, should get up, great right field position for their offensive unit to get the ball for the first time in the second half. Gamina's the man in the middle. They're waiting back at 30. Olds is also back over there to the far side. You have to think, because it is a free kick, Robson can keep it away from Moles. Sends it over to the near side. It is going to be taken by McGee. McGee had that big play in the first half on the screen. And got a big play starting the second half. There was McGee. All the way down to the 14. Coming into the ball game, it appeared at least on paper that North Carolina State had the better kicking teams than Mississippi State, but two plays in a row by the special teams, big plays for Mississippi State. Watch McGee go into the pack and then bust out and shows the acceleration on the outside as he outruns the punter Robson and picks up a couple blocks down along the sideline. You think the job is done when you keep it away from Mold, but then another guy comes back and makes the play. There are Molds in motion on first down, leading by two and a dead ball foul coming up. It'll go against the offense, but what a way to start the second half for your offensive unit to put him in that kind of field position. Dead ball. All start. Offense. Let's check in with a good doctor, Jerry Punts. Jerry? Guys, at halftime, Michael Kane challenged the NC State Wolfpack football team. He said two things will win this football game, courage and character. But it's going to take a little more than that because they already have lost Kenny Harris. He will not play in the second half. Damian Covington had a cast put on his right hand. He already had one on his left hand. And defensive tackle Mike Harrison is playing on one wheel. Back up there. Banged up group defensively. The last thing they could afford in the secondary. Bowling his way down to the 12 is Michael Davis. The senior for Mississippi. He got eight on the 
Jerry. First and 15. Well, Jerry just mentioned Damian Covington. Watch again as he's trying to slip past the block of the center, Brian Anderson, and Anderson is just kind of baiting him into that move. He's allowing him to take that one step, inviting him to go one way, then he's taking himself out of the play, and there again, you see the strength and the power of Michael Davis when he gets past that first line of defense. He is a very difficult man to bring down. Eight on first down. Davis again. Great penetration that time by Damian Covington. He torpedoed that play early. The senior from Berlin, New Jersey. Been a first-team All-ACC performer in each of the last two seasons. You know, and Doctor mentioned he just got another cast put on his hand. Did you see how he made that tackle? Didn't even try to wrap up with the hands or the arms. He went right with the shoulder and knocked the legs out. Watch Covington on this tackle. Nice, nice form tackling. Tackling Davis low. Now we talked about the red zone earlier. For Mississippi State, they started inside the 15. Now they're looking at 37 at the 12. Got to find Eric Moulds if you're Derek Payne on this. Tate calling some time as he's flushed out. Looking to go back the other way and bat it away from the intended target. They wanted Fred McCrary, the fullback. Good coverage by North Carolina State as their defense holds. Jackie Sherrill's turn telling Derek Tate right there to run the football. When you get on out on that oh, corner, run the football. But Derek, he's got to find Eric Mould. There he is working one-on-one -on -one against Dre Major. I take my chances with that matchup. I mean, he's six foot three. He's 205 pounds. Get him the football. Let him try to break that one tackle and get the ball into the end zone. He's too good a player to not get him the football in that situation. Tim Rogers, two for three so far. This is a 29-yard attempt. And he's got it. So now a five-point advantage for Mississippi State. 10.45 left in the third quarter. We'll be right back for the 95 Peach Bowl. The Peach Bowl is presented by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? The underground is alive and well in Atlanta, and so is the Peach Bowl game. Welcome back once again, Joel Myers, Todd Blackledge, and Dr. Jerry Punch. And Todd, you were just talking about that matchup, Dre Major, uh, against Derek Mould. Something they're going to have to exploit. Major making his first start of the season due to the injuries and also the suspension of James Walker in the secondary. But that's something we'll look for down the road offensively for Mississippi State to exploit. Major, a senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, is a former walk-on. Yeah, basically a special teams player his first couple of years, backed up last year, backed up this year, a real hard worker. We'll see if they try to capitalize on that situation. The kickoff from Russ. He'll be taken by Alvis Whitting at the goal line. He is horse counting down as he lost the ball, but they're going to say he's down already. Another look at the third down opportunity for quarterback Derek Tate. I want to show you now what Jackie Sherrill was upset about. They're going to run this receiver on a little post pattern, and he's going to draw double coverage. Eric Moulds is going to get single coverage right here. But run this play, and you're going to see the opening that Derek Tate had. Now, he could have gone to Moulds right there. Stop it right there. Look at this lane that he has. If he just runs the football right there, he gets the first down easy. He runs to the sideline and tries to make the throw back. Remain Stevens. Bulldog down after crossing the 25 at the 27. Al Cotton, the junior from Dallas, on the solo stop. A gain of about three for Stevens. We heard Dr. Punch report that, that Jackie Sherrill felt his defense had gotten the feel for the rhythm of the North Carolina State offense. They've got to try to change up a little bit. Look for a little bit more play action, I think, by Terry Harvey. It's going to be up to his arm, I think, in the second half for the Wolfpack. Second and seven situation as they double up the wide side of the field. Pressure right away, looking for Stevens in the flat, breaking the initial tackle. What an effort to get to the first down. What a dive across the 35 to the 36. That's heads up play, knowing where the marker is. He is really an impressive freshman. Plays with a lot of poise. Just seems to make the right decisions, the right plays. Credit Terry Harvey for getting that throw out to him under duress. Watch as they go to the play action now. He's going to get some pressure from the inside. Larry Williams kind of has to throw that thing flat-footed, but gets it out in a good position for Stevens. And then the speed and the strength on the outside. It's a first down at the 36. Fitzgerald. With Grissett. 
didn't put him on that reverse, did they? In fact, they lost six. Knocked out at the 30. They told us they were throwing some gadgets in to make it entertaining for the team in the four-week process of getting ready for this game. When you run a reverse, you hope that you get an over-aggressive defense that will pursue the play, but that time, great work on the back side of the play by Wes Lisi, number 94. He stays right at home. He's right down here at the bottom. He's going to come up the field, and he's not going to get caught up in the fake. He's going to stay at home. And Terry Harvey's going to try to put a block on him. That's a mismatch. He does a great job staying to the outside. And then his cornerback, Harris, comes to make the helping tackle. As you said, he tried to put a block on him. Second and 16, back at the 30. The play fake for Stevens. What a pop. The ball is free. Larry Williams coming up with the sack and the fumble recovery. particular guy out but Heath Woods the right tackle is going to get beat here this is Larry Williams their best pass rusher and he's going to be working one-on-one -on, -one on the right tackle Heath Woods and Woods just doesn't move his feet enough Terry Harvey was looking to his left he didn't have time to get rid of the football and just a great upfield pass rush by Larry Williams a junior college guy who has really come on later in the season for the Bulldogs starting now at the NC State 22 last time they had it with the 14 Tate looking to throw, going for molds, he's got him. And just past his fingertips. They've got to capitalize this time and get it into the end zone. Wasted opportunities right now for the Bulldogs. They only lead it by five. See, they went with the out and up to molds. The only problem with this is they haven't thrown the, the quick pass to him yet. They tried to go with the quick hitch and go, and it didn't fool the defender at all. William Strong was right on the coverage. It had to be a perfect throw to get the touchdown, but you know, normally you throw that hitch and go after you've hit the hitch in front of the cornerback a couple times. All year long, Mississippi State has been an opportunistic bunch. They have capitalized on the turnovers that they have forced. Not so far tonight in this 95 Peach Bowl game. Nine and a half minutes left in the third. They're going to the ground with Bowie. What a bull. Broke the tackle to the backfield and takes it down to the 19 for a game of about two, two and a half. We check in once again with Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, following the previous Mississippi State possession when they did not score in the red zone, they came over to the sidelines, and Eric Mole spent the entire time on the headset talking up with wide receiver coach Greg Christopher. Now, Christopher must have been giving Moles an earful. All Moles was saying was, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So apparently they have told Moles he has got to be a factor down here in the red zone. Look for him to go to them again, possibly on the fade. Back up there. Here they go, Jerry, third and eight. Moles over to the wide side of the field. Jones over to the near side. Tate with plenty of time. Coming back for Jones. Too wide. And again, I, you know, I know I'm saying this again. Eric Moles is going to get frustrated in this ball game now. He just ran a crossing route, and he was open. It was underneath the coverage. It wasn't the deep throw into the end zone, but he was open and could have turned this into a big play. Watch as he crosses the defense. You've got to give him the football. Derek Tate tried to go for the touchdown, the big play, but that is the guy who has to have the football in his hands if you're Mississippi State. Tim Rogers now three for four. This is going to be a 36-yard try. Plenty of foot into it. Is it inside the upright? Yes. He has been a key contributor today. As they have failed to capitalize on so many opportunities deep in North Carolina State territory, but still an eight-point lead for the Bulldogs. Already in the third quarter, Mississippi State has blocked a punt for a safety at a 51-yard kick return, recovered a fumble, but they've only been able to manufacture eight points out of all of that positive and good fortune that they've had. Let's look back at that last play and the pressure late. Take a look at Carl Reeves now at the bottom of your screen. Watch him as he gets the good pass rush to the outside. He's not going to get the sack, but he's right Right there breathing down the neck of Derek Tate. Tate certainly knows he's there. And, and with the injury now to Covington and a couple other guys banged up on that defense, Reeves really has to step to the forefront. He's a senior. He's been a great player his whole career. He has to really make more plays here in the second half. Andy Russ, the putter, kicks it away. It'll be taken by one of the up men of the 25. And bringing it back for the Wolfpack that time. 
reserve tight end Jason McGeorge, a sophomore from Gainesville, Florida. It's a good field position for North Carolina State, and they've got to feel fortunate that they are only down by eight with 831 left in the third. I think for North Carolina State, they have to throw the football on first down, on the early downs, because Mississippi State, they substitute defensively. They have their run-stopping defensive linemen in on first and second down. They bring their better pass rushers in on second and long or third down. I think they're better off trying to throw against this defense that's on the field right now. Remains Stevens trying to bounce it back after starting outside. Tripped up across the 35 at the 36, Mike James with the ankle tackle, the inside linebacker. But five on first down for North Carolina State, and I tend to agree with you. You set up the run, especially for Stevens. Get some early success with the passing game on first down. There's Ted Kane, the offensive coordinator. Mississippi State likes to play the early downs with guys like James Greer and Jimmy Miles and Brent Smith. Those guys are, are big physical guys. They're good run-stopping people, but they're not real good up the field pass rush type. Larry Williams comes in on third down. He's their best rusher. The option pitch for Stevens. They were waiting for him on the outside. Still cracks it back inside for a first down. He won't go down. He's got it across the 42. What an effort again wow. by Stevens. That's impressive because Charlie Davidson has to be shaking his head right now. He was in perfect position. They defended the option exactly the way you draw it up on the chalkboard. He just didn't wrap up. He couldn't make the tackle. Running back has to love making cuts on this carpet, though, at the Georgia Dome. Stevens got great burst, great acceleration, but he's got some strength, too. Look at him, 186 pounds, just runs out of that tackle. Gamina is out there to force him back to the inside, but it's the second effort, the yards he gets after getting hit a couple times, that gives him the first down. He gets a break now over the bench. 14 carries, 82 yards for Tremaine Stevens, the true freshman. If Gerald has taken over. They fake the option. Look for Fitzgerald. He was available. Low toss, though, from Terry Harvey. I like the scheme, though. Matching him up with the outside backer. So it'll be second and ten now, but they were throwing that time on first down, and we've got a timeout. I mentioned how Dwayne Curry is just a sophomore. Watch him here. They're going to try to influence him with the play fake, but then as the bat goes out, he reads it quickly and is out right on the coverage. Good work by the sophomore. He doesn't get fooled for long. Sees the fake, and then he runs. He's responsible for coverage on the tailback, and he's there to just kind of disrupt the timing of the throw. That's good recognition by Dwayne Curry. And he goins. All-time leading pass catcher for North Carolina State, unfortunately. Missed the last three. Out with a knee injury tonight as well. And a new left tackle has taken over Scott Woods with Chris Henning Road on the bench. Had to leave with an injury. Tremaine Stevens taking it across the 45. Out past the 47. Still brings up third and a long five, almost six. But that's a huge loss if Chris Henning Road cannot come back in at left tackle. Take a look at Dwayne Curry again as they run the lead play. He fights off the block of the fullback and gets just a piece of the ankle of the tailback in there on the tackle. He is a very physical inside linebacker. They kind of caught Mississippi State in a stunt there, moving the lineman, but good play by Curry. And now Mississippi State has called a timeout as well with 6.57 left in the third. At the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Sophomore from Nashville. Getting ready to punt it away to Brian Fitzgerald. Nine plays and 12 yards offensively, with no first downs from Mississippi State in the third quarter, but they had eight points in the third quarter because of the turnovers. Fitzgerald lets it go and gets a break. Everything going the Wolfpack's way right now. Well, Reeves came up with that big play. We well, talked to his head coach, Mike O'Kane, who filled us in and told us earlier about his leadership and his intensity. I've never coached a young man that, that plays with more intensity, uh, more tenacity than, uh, than Carl Reeves. Now, he's a tremendously emotional young man, and, and I don't care whether it's uh, in August, in March, in April, when he does anything, he does it full speed. Coach is right there to grab him. 
You know, I was talking to a couple pro scouts. They like this guy. Even though he's undersized, he loves to play the game. He has a motor that won't quit. And I'll tell you what, you like to have a guy like that on your football team at any level. Carlos King pulling his way straight up the middle for five, almost six. So good yardage on first down for North Carolina State. And the numbers through three. And the biggest surprise, of course, North Carolina State with more rushing yardage than Mississippi State behind that huge offensive line for the Bulldogs. Ever since they've gotten over the couple uh, bumble plays in their special teams, the offensive line and, the, and the, the backs blocking for North Carolina State have really kind of taken over the momentum at the line of scrimmage. Second, a little less than five. The play fake. That'll freeze him with Stevens. And what a pop. Grissett held on. Jimmy Grissett turning it on. All the way inside the 15. Has this game ever turned around for the Wolfpack? 62 yards on the reception. Take a look at this now as you watch the play. They're going to go play action. He actually had Adrian Hill running a post pattern deep who was open. He went to the underneath, the in route, and there's three defenders right there. It's a good hit at the point of contact by Andre Bennett, the free safety, but credit Grissett for just staying on his feet and turning a, about a 15-yard route into a huge play for the Wolfpack. That's where a lot of receivers get those alligator arms, don't they? That's right. Over the middle. You know, if a receiver does that, a quarterback has so much confidence. If he'll go over the middle and make that catch for you, you better believe that when you get down around the end zone, that quarterback will, will give you an extra look because you make the tough catch for him over the middle. And what a bullet from the quarterback, Terry Harvey. Terry Harvey, when he throws on rhythm, and look at the protection. Not a white shirt around him. He can stand in there, threads the needle with the throw, and then Grissett does a great job busting out of the arm tackle and taking it down inside the 20. Do you think he was 60 feet, 6 inches away from home plate with that kind of throw? Tremaine Stevens. Bells into the backfield. Still leans for a couple. Harvey now 10 of 14 for 140 yards. And if he joins us a little bit late tonight, Terry Harvey, a phenomenal baseball pitcher for the Wolfpack team, baseball team. No hit Florida State last year at Florida State. And actually has been drafted three times in his career. Most recently in the 94 draft, he was drafted by the Texas Rangers in the 11th round. He's, he's turned it down every year that he's been drafted. And at this point, now said, said in the press conference this week, hey, after I've been through all that I've been through, I'm not going to quit football with one year left. After all I've put up with, I'm going to go ahead and play my fourth year and then maybe play baseball afterwards. He's back in his neck of the woods. Grew up just outside of the Atlanta area. And they run the option. This time, Carlos King cuts it back inside. Touchdown, North Carolina State. Turned around for the Wolfpack. We worried at the top of the show about would the defense of North Carolina State get fatigued in this ball game. We are seeing a very tired Mississippi State defense now in the second half of this football game. Earlier in the ball game, when North Carolina State ran the, the option, Mississippi State was all over it, right on their assignments. Who had the quarterback? Who had the back? Look at Dwayne Curry walking up with the aid of a couple trainers. Both he and Mike James came hobbling off the field on that play. Late in the game now as the option. Watch, it's not being defended nearly as well. Quarterback is defended, but nobody's there for the pitch. The inside linebackers aren't stra scraping across to make the play. And nobody hits Carlos King. Watch Adrian Hill. Look at, look at the position as he uses his feet and just keeps moving his body to stay in position to help his guy get into the end zone. Nice kick out block as well by Dallas Dickerson, the tight end. Vitek for the extra point try. And the Wolfpack now with 15 unanswered points, lead it by seven. 13.06 left in the contest. The Wolfpack have the lead once again.
Beach Bowl is presented by Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. And by Chrysler Plymouth and your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Total turnaround for the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. They were dominant over the first seven, eight minutes of the third quarter, got it back together over the final seven and a half minutes of the third, and now what a start of the first two minutes of the fourth quarter. 28-21, Wolfpack over the Bulldogs of Mississippi State as they work on the ankle now of Dwayne Gurry. He took a shot trying to get outside on that touchdown run by Carlos King. Both the inside linebackers were blocked pretty well at the point of attack by North Carolina State on that time. Curry actually looked like he was slipping his man and got tripped up right at the end of that play, but neither linebacker could flow over and make a play on the pitch man. That's why the touchdown was so easily made by North Carolina State. Bowles waiting back around the 10-yard line. Benedict keeps it over to the near side, though, to Kevin McGee. He brings it back from the three. And a huge hole for McGee. McGee all the way to the midfield strike into Wolfpack territory at the 49. And we were told coming in that the coverage on the kicks was suspect for North Carolina State as we head back downstairs to Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, injuries beginning to mount for the Mississippi State defense. Take their Alcott and the defensive uh, lineman that was carried off in the previous series has a sprained left knee. He is questionable, number 54. Now, Dwayne Curry was helped off the field after the previous series. He has a sprained right ankle. They're going to try to retake him and get him back in. But Mike James, the inside linebacker, strained knee ligaments, left knee, a left MCL. He is out for the remainder of the game. Back upstairs. Thanks, Jerry. So 48 yards of the return by Kevin McGee. And don't forget, he had a 51-yard return after the safety on the punt by Robson. He's done his job on special teams. Tim tried to kick away from Moles. He gets Bowie. He's dragged down from behind for little or no gain. Well, this is a swarming North Carolina State defense now playing with a lot of emotion. They're attacking the line of scrimmage. And, and really, it's about time that the Mississippi State offensive line start to assert itself. As you look, they're only 15 yards in the second half. After a very good first half, they have not been on the field very much. But when they've been there, they have not been productive. You know, Dr. Punch was talking about those ankle and knee injuries. It's interesting to note that this is the first time in 20 games that Mississippi State has played on AstroTurf. They've played every game this year on natural grass. This is a much different surface, a much harder surface. It's a lot tougher on your ankles and knees. They hit the tight end. Does Kendall Watkins ever take a shot? Making the stop, Ricky Bell. The cornerback who's starting at safety tonight due to the absence of James Walker. At this point in the game, with North Carolina State having a lead, the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to give up a big, easy play to their big play guy, Eric Moulds. Very good coverage running down the field that time by William Strong. Still, Mississippi State without a first down in the second half. This drive started to the North Carolina State 49. Four possessions now in the second half for Mississippi State. And three of the four have started in Wolfpack territory. This is the third and seven inside the 46. Tate out of the shotgun in trouble. And a diving grab and score the first down by McCrary, the fullback, because of the heat again by Reeves. Reeves plays with not only the great intensity, but he has such great natural flexibility. He plays very low to the ground. Watch how low he gets as he runs right under the block of the right tackle, Melvin Hayes. He has great natural leverage that he plays the game with. Very low to the ground. It's tough for a big six foot six offensive tackle to just get down that low to block him. So now with the punting situation coming up for Andy Russ, only 23 yards of offense in the second half for Mississippi State. Gerald waits back at the 10. Reeves almost got close to that one. It's Gerald calling for the fair catch and takes it in near the 19. The Wolfpack have it back, and they've had two long drives now. They get it back with 10.42 left. And North Carolina State with the momentum leads by seven. Welcome you back to the 27th Annual Peach Bowl. NC State up 28-21 here in the fourth quarter. You know, preparation continued for NC State right up until game time here tonight. Take a look. That is William Hicks, NC State's Director of Athletic Improvement. Now, he brought down an entire truckload of weights, dumbbells, benches, 
and curl bars. That's Eric Kelts. That's Steve Kime there. And by the way, the young lady to the left, that is four-year-old Jessica William Hicks' daughter. Santa Claus visited her in their hotel slash weight room this past week. In fact, Hicks says it's that kind of conditioning that's allowed NC State to come back four times this year in the fourth quarter and pick up the victory. Yeah, you're exactly, exactly right, Jerry. I mean, the, the fourth quarter conditioning that these athletes have, that, that's been a difference for this team all season. Rod Brown was available just off the mark for one of the few times as now Terry Harvey is 10 of 15 in the passing department for 140 yards, 10.39 left, and now a time-consuming drive that even results in just a field goal for North Carolina State could doom the chances of the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Mississippi State, don't forget, only has one timeout remaining. All three left for the Wolfpack. Nine first downs in this half. For North Carolina State, Mississippi State has yet to pick up the first down, only 23 yards of total offense for the Bulldogs. In the second 30 minutes of play so far. Second and 10 for the 19. It's Stevens. He's got five to the 24. Every time he touches the ball, though, it's just about five per pop. Well, Dwayne Curry still on the bench. Taking over Paul Lacoste. Paul Lacoste not nearly the same physical specimen that Dwayne Curry is in there, but Lacoste has, has gotten a lot of valuable playing time the last two years as a backup, played a lot on special teams, but they certainly need his presence, Dwayne Curry's, back in the ballgame as soon as they can get it. Third and five situation now as they put Fitzgerald in the wing back position. And Harvey falls down. So it's going to be a punting situation. A three and out for the first time in the second half for North Carolina State. Take a look. This happens to every quarterback that's ever played. Watch his left foot there. The center's going to step back. He's got a man right over his nose. He's got to get in position to make the pass block. You can see the left foot got stepped on. And that's a, kind of an embarrassing feeling to have happen to you, but it's happened to everybody that's ever played the position. Chad Robson's second punt. Don't forget his first punt was blocked by the free safety Andre Bennett. Gets this one away. As Yule lets it hit, and it takes a wolf back roll. Everything going their way in the second half now. Look at this baby still rolling. You think they had the wind at their back? <laughs> We're in the Georgia Dome, folks. The punt, a 60-yarder for Robson. That's the longest of the season for the young man with the Wolfpack leading by seven. Mississippi State still looking for the first first down of the second half, trailing the Wolfpack, North Carolina State by seven. And let's see on this possession, they finally get one in the direction of Eric Moulds. Without a catch, their leading receiver coming in, led the SEC, in fact, with a 22-yard average per catch. The third in the conference with 78 yards receiving per game. And I doubt he will see single coverage anymore in this ballgame. He has seen it for most of the first three quarters, but he's going to get a lot of cover, too, with the corner and safety coming over to help. I doubt he'll get one-on-one -on -one matchups the rest of this ballgame. Looking in that direction, but going back for Chris Jones. And he makes a fine grab, tiptoeing the sideline for a first down to the 34. That's good for 13 yards. This is the fifth possession. That's a nice second half for Mississippi State, and they finally have their first first down. Nice read by Derek Tate. He wanted to go to Eric Moulds on this play. He couldn't get it, came back to his secondary receiver. As we take a look at their possessions, they have not done much with the football here in the second half, but they've got some pretty good field position right now with which to operate. And remember that Kevin Bowie and Michael Davis in the first half combined for 93 yards. Only four yards between the two so far, though, in the second half. They think at that time Davis looking to go back and, and the head molds wide open. Carl Reeves got great pressure again. He forced Derek Tate to throw the ball early. Molds was open. Take a look at Carl Reeves now working on the pass rush again. Look how low he is. Look at that stance. It's like a, a cat stance. He just runs right past the backup tight end Brandon Mann. And he forces Derek Tate to unload the football before he was ready to throw it. Here's Eric Moulds running the crossing route. He's going to come wide open, but Tate had to get rid of the football too early. And again, you see the frustration beginning to show in the body language of Eric Moulds. 
Second and ten now. Mississippi State with the ball of their own 34th down by seven. 849 left of the contest. Davis. Good yardage on second down. As he takes across the 40. They'll put him right at the 40-yard line. So now it's going to bring up third and four. They have not been able to feature their tailback tandem in the second half the way they did in the first half. So many opportunities for Jackie Sherrill's squad. First two possessions for the second half. Started for North Carolina State 14, then the Wolfpack 22. I'd keep your regular formation in here. Maybe run a bootleg with Derek Tate. Let him have the option to run the football. Keep all those big bodies in that you can to, to help your pass protection. Good decision here keeping the tight end in in this pass situation. They take it to McCrary, and they throw it right over the hands of Kendall Watkins, the tight end. So once again, very little rhythm the offensive unit of Mississippi State in the second half. They pick up that first first down on their fifth possession. But again, he really rushed it to Watkins, who was available. Yeah, and see, that's what happens when you get hit the first time you tried to throw in this drive. This time he has the time to wait and let it open, and he kind of throws it too early. The ball sails on him. He didn't get a chance to set his feet, or he didn't take the time, rather, to set his feet and make that good throw for the first down. Doc Moore had a rush from Nashville. Third punt of the night. Yes, it's a wobbler. Fitzgerald says stay away from it. It takes a Mississippi State roll. Will they be able to catch up with it? I believe so. It looked like he knocked it out of bounds at the one. Yes. What a play on the special teams for the Bulldogs in getting down there. It was Robert Isaac, a freshman from McComb. Well, we've seen a couple punters get good breaks with a good bounce. Take a look as Isaac just tracks this down. He's going to circle his body behind the football. That's good work. He knows where the end zone is. He never touches into the end zone. That's good work. That's excellent work on the special teams, knowing where the goal line is, getting behind the football, and forcing it out of bounds. So after Chad Robson's 60-yard punt, Russ comes back with a 59-yarder of his own. And now with eight and a half minutes to play, we talked about it at the very open of the show. Ball security of the utmost for North Carolina State. They've given it away a couple of times. They can't afford to this deep in their own territory. The quarterback, Harvey, keeps it for some breathing room. Out to the three. College basketball comes your way tomorrow night on ESPN. Great doubleheader, Purdue at Michigan. That'll start at 7.30 Eastern time. It all begins with the Big Ten. And then for the Southeastern Conference, South Carolina taking on the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. That's at 9.30. So join us for more great college basketball on ESPN tomorrow night, all beginning at 7.30. Joel, the thing you want to do here is obviously you want to try to make a first down, but if not, you want to at least get it outside the five-yard line so your punter has some room to kick the football. Keep him in the hands of the fullback, Rod Brown. Same play all the way for a yard to the four. You've got a seven-point lead. There's seven and a half minutes left in the ball game. You don't want to turn it over. You don't want to do anything crazy, but you really don't want to have to put your punter in a situation of, of setting his back feet at the back of the end zone. You want to try to push it out there, give him a little breathing room so he feels comfortable making the kick. And you know he needs at least the space he normally has because they've already blocked one of his tonight. That came early in the third quarter. Red zone problems for Mississippi State in the first half we talked about. It, it really continued at the start of the second half. And that's why they're down by seven right now, 28 to 21. On the third to seven for the Wolfpack. Play clock running down on Terry Harvey also. He's got to hustle up. Just barely got it off inside. And Harvey going deep. He's got Adrian Hill. Knocked away at the last second by the defensive back. Play back to the junior from Dallas with a big play. That was an outstanding play by Clay Mack, Joe, because Adrian Hill was open, and he's going to get both hands on the football. Beautiful touch by Terry Harvey. Now, whenever he gets two hands on the football, you assume he's going to make the catch, but Clay Mack never gives up on the play. He gets his hand in there and knocks it out. The life of a coach. <laughs> Michael Canary. Uh, Looks like a, another former Wolfpack guy, Bill Cower, who was a great linebacker. Damian Covington broke his tackle record at North Carolina State. He's a little emotional on the sideline as well. Line drive off the side of the foot. Yule gets it at the 45. 
He is buried inside the 40, but what great field position now for Mississippi State. And I think I saw a flag at the very end of the play. Yes, I did. A flag at the end of the play at the point of the tackle. Jackie Sherrill's squad in great shape as far as field position is concerned. If they can get it together offensively. It's going to be a five-yard face mask. There were three guys for North Carolina State there to make the tackle, but as Buell was getting up off the pile, he was re readjusting his helmet. We have an incidental face mask against the kickers on the return. Five-yard penalty. First down. This is the sixth possession now for Mississippi State in the second half and the fourth that they would have started in Wolfpack territory. Hard to believe they've only been able to score eight. William Davis have really been quiet in the second half after a solid first half combining for 93 yards. They just haven't had the, you mentioned it earlier, the rhythm that they had offensively in the first half. They were just kind of moving in sync. They were running well. They were throwing well. They just have been really out of rhythm here in the second half of the ball game. 648 remaining. Moles the motion man. The forgotten one. And Bowie tripped up in the backfield. John Rissler got him around the ankles, wouldn't let him go. He's a junior from Sarasota, Florida. John Rissler has had his hands full all evening, going head up against Kendall Watkins, the 300-pound tight end from Mississippi State. We haven't called his name too much because he's just doing the best he can, holding his own against a very good blocking tight end. That time, he got good penetration and made the play in the backfield. Very bright young man with a 3.3 grade point average in business management, a member of the ACC's all-academic team. He comes up with a big drop on first down, the ultimate for the Wolfpack, second and long for Mississippi State, second and a dozen. Tate with a play fake, he's got his man wide open, McCrary out of the backfield for the first down. Serious field position now for Mississippi State with six minutes left in the contest. 21 yards on the catch. Nice job. Good play call by Bruce Arians. You see all the commitment now. He's going to find the fullback. Look at these linebackers looking in. They're going to slip the fullback right down the middle of the field. Watch the linebackers go with the play fake. See him step into the play fake. Then they turn, but by that time, it's too late. McCrary's already by him and down the hash mark for the nice touch pass by Derek Tate. Good call by Bruce Arians slipping the fullback down the middle of the field. He knew they wanted to go to the senior from Naples, Florida. The fullback McCrary came at the contest, second on the squad in catches. And Bowie belted right at the line, gets a yard. And that is it. They've done an outstanding job of stopping the running game of Mississippi State. Clock moving inside of five and a half minutes left for Jer Jackie Gerald's squad. Down by seven. McGee is bringing in the play. And when we've seen McGee in there, we've seen either a gadget or a screen pass. He's the one they love to run on the screen play. He's a redshirt freshman up Crawford, Mississippi. Single set in the backfield as they put McCrary in a wingback spot. Second and nine. Tate for Molds. Almost a great grab. Molds ran out of room, though. Up against William Strong, the quarterback, and did a fine job. You know, Ken Pettis told us that William Strong was an outstanding cover guy, and he's really shown it tonight in the, in the situations where he's had the one-on-one -on -one matchup with Mould. He's done a nice job. Watch what he does on this one. He uses the sideline as an extra defender. He just kind of keeps using his body, forcing Mould to the sideline. Even if Eric makes that catch, he's not going to get his foot down inbounds for the touchdown. So good job by William Strong, knowing that he's got some room to work with the sideline as a help. Almost hard to believe inside of five minutes to play, and Mould still doesn't have a catch in this contest. Third and nine. Red zone problems. Will they continue? Overshoots McGee. So now, fourth and nine for the Bulldogs. Derek Tate didn't help that play at all. When you, when you want to run a screen as a quarterback, you have to try to sell it a little bit. You want to set, and you want to try to sell it, get the rush to come at you. That time, he just kind of kept drifting back. Watch Tate. He's showing screen all the way. He never sets his feet. And North Carolina State does a nice job finding the play and reading the screen, getting the deflection. It's going to be a 30-yard field goal drive for Tim Rogers. He's been most of the offense tonight. He's four for five. He's now five for six. A 30-yard field goal makes it a four-point contest. 
Jackie Sherrill looking up at the board. He's only got one timeout left. Don't forget about that. A couple of first downs. Could really do a number on their chances. It's a 28-24 lead for North Carolina State with 4.47 left in the contest. And the Wolfpack with all three of their timeouts remaining. Really a great job all night by North Carolina State playing defense inside the red zone. I mean, they just are really... Uh, buckled up the chin strap an extra notch when they get inside the red zone they have really uh, really held Mississippi State in check in the red zone they've scored but five to six times with field goals and that was the story during the regular season coming into tonight's game in the red zone they were there 46 times and they came away with 25 touchdowns not a great percentage when you're there that often Bruce Arians, the offensive coordinator from Mississippi State with a very frustrating night with all the opportunities they failed to capitalize on, especially at the outset of the third quarter when they really could have opened up a big cushion. Bruce really knows the, the importance of the red zone. He was a running back coach for the Kansas City Chiefs for several years, was in pro football, and, and, and you learn that, that touchdowns just add up so much faster than field goals. When you have to settle for field goals, it allows that other team to stay right in the ballgame. You never have that sense that you can put a team away if you can't stick it in the end zone. Andy Ross kicks it away and gets a good one away. With it coming over should stay right there and does so. A wise decision for a touchback. First and 10 at the 20, and we head downstairs to Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, we're with W. Whitley Hawkins, who's chairman of the board of the Peach Bowl. And Mr. Hawkins, uh, what an incredible comeback for a postseason bowl game. From near extinction a few years ago to eight consecutive 60,000-plus crowds. Uh, how'd you do it? Well, uh, in 1986, the uh, Peach Bowl uh, came under the auspices of the Chamber of Commerce so we could give it a professional year-round staff and I think our staff is second to none in the bowl business I think that has an awful lot to do with it they've certainly been wonderful to us what's ahead for the Peach Bowl what's down the road well as you may know we've bid 110 million dollars this year uh, to try to get into the bowl coalition that's a three-year deal we still see a national championship here in the Peach Bowl that's what we're aiming for Mr. Hawkins thanks for joining us and thanks for a great football game thank you thanks for ESPN being here Joel Terry Harvey, Jerry over is shooting Dallas Dickerson, the senior from Oxford, North Carolina. So they're throwing on first down. That helps Mississippi State stopping the clock with 442 remaining. There's the backup quarterback, Jeff Bender. He was in there for a couple of series, and produced a field goal on that second drive that he was in there for. That young man has to be the most frustrated in the entire building tonight. Eric Moles. One of the best in the SEC has not been able to come up with a reception. Second and ten. The fullback, Carlos King. He got two. And now, Mississippi State. Stop the clock, no, it continues to run inside of four and a half minutes to play. Nice play by Paul Lacoste, number 20, who's in there for Dwayne Curry at the inside linebacker position. He's getting the feel for the game now. That time he really bulked up and made a nice play against the fullback, stopping that run for very short yardage. Huge play now for the Bulldog defense, third and eight. Ryan Fitzgerald. Setting up, coming in with a play over the wing back. They keep Carlos King, the only one in the backfield behind Harvey. They're looking at King in the flat. And a good job by the linebacker on that side. Great play by Scott Gavina, number 26. He's a senior. He's the one of those guys that's, that's too small, really, to play linebacker, but he's a very smart player, and he's good in these situations. He was hurt late in the third quarter. He got back in there, though. Remember what Bill Clay told us. I almost lost my job over yeah. keeping Scott Gamina in his position because he's too small to be there. Gamina and Mike James, undersized linebackers, but the defensive coordinator stayed with them. Yeah, and they're very helpful in the nickel situations like that because you don't have to substitute and put a new guy into the game because they're used to playing out there in space like a defensive back. That time, Gamina, great form on the outside, keeping his position, making the tackle. Now they go after Robson again. They set up for the return, and Robson gets good hang time this one as it's taken by Ewell back at the 35 so an outstanding putt in the clutch a 43 yarder by the senior from Newburgh North Carolina 
Here it comes, the big drive from Mississippi State, but we come back with three minutes left. Thousands of fans here for North Carolina State as well as Mississippi State. And right now, the fans for the Wolfpack trying to make as much noise as possible. While Derek Tate tries to direct a game-winning drive for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. First and 10 from the 35. Tate has time, and he's got a first down of the midfield drive to Chris Jones. Finally set his feet and took his time going over the middle. Take a look at Carl Reeves now working on the best offensive lineman on the Mississippi State team, Jesse James. He could be a high draft pick, but just the quickness of Carl Reeves. Good work by James just to wheel back and get a headgear in front of the legs of Reeves, but Carl Reeves has great quickness, and he really explodes off the line of scrimmage. Stayed out of his shotgun on first and ten with pressure. First catch of the night for Moles. It's a five-yarder to the 45. The clock continues to move inside of two and a half minutes to play. North Carolina State leading by four. Well, it was a long time in coming for Eric Moles, but he finally gets a catch. Eric Tate under pressure again, throws a high ball. You see the leaping ability. 45-inch vertical jump Eric Moles has. He could have been a great basketball player in college as well, but has a great future, I think, as a wide receiver. First of the night. And if you're Jackie Sherry, you don't want it to end with one catch. you got to get in the ball some more. Second and five, middle screen. McGee gets away. McGee has a first down and then some. All the way down inside the 28. They told us to watch McGee on the screen, and they've been going in his direction every time they try to run that play. Reeves worked on the big left tackle, James, a play ago. This time he's on Melvin Hayes, the right tackle. Melvin Hayes gets a big paw on him and kind of pushes him down to the ground and then falls on him. But watch the perfect execution of the middle screen. Nice block by Jason Wisner, number 66, opens it up in the middle. The pass for Jones off the mark. That'll stop the clock now with a minute 45 left and a flag down on the play as well. Face mask call. This game really belongs to Derek Tate right now. I mean, he, he led his team back to two come-from-behind last-minute wins earlier in the season against Tennessee and South Carolina. So Jackie Sherrill and this offensive team knows that this man can do it, but he's got to just kind of put behind him and put out of his memory anything that happened in the first three and a half quarters of this game where he didn't make the throws and he's got to just focus on right now a minute 45 left Derek Tate had 14 touchdown passes this year for Mississippi State the second highest total for a single season in Bulldog history so he's had a great deal of success in their eight and three campaign Let's not forget, as we saw Jackie Sherrill on the sideline, what he has meant to the Bulldog pro program as they take it all the way back to the 45, and that's a huge blow. A shot at the face mask on the offensive line. But over the last four years in SEC play, they've been 15-15-1 under Sherrill. The previous four years, 3-28 in conference play. And it's now first and 29. Tate with time. Has Jones. It's popped up and almost picked off. Almost coming up with the pick was David Weichi. The freshman from Camden, New Jersey. That stops it with a minute 40 left. Pretty good throw that time by Derek Tate as he's throwing the in route. Looking off to his right, he's looking to Molds first. Comes back across the field. That ball is right there. And you mentioned the uh, the alligator arms a little bit earlier in the ball game. Chris Jones that time looking for the free safety. Whitey to find out where he was. Didn't make the catch. Second and 29 outside of the 45 of the Wolfpack. Don't forget only one timeout left for Mississippi State. Tate for the tight end. It's down to the 36. Taking it in that time. Michael Brown. The hurry up on third and long. Now it is third and 19 after completion for 10. Pocket holds up well, and Tate overthrows Yule by a big margin. So here it comes for Mississippi State. As you can see, Mike O'Kane, it all boils down to one play for his defensive unit. 
Su surprisingly, on that third down play, a critical third down and long play, Eric Molds wasn't even in the ball game. He's coming in now for the fourth down play. The ball game boils down to the next play for Mississippi State. We'll be right back to the Peach Bowl. In the contest. Fourth and 19 for their quarterback, Derek Tate. They've got Moles back in the ball game, and Jackie Sherrill wisely called a timeout using their final timeout. North Carolina State has been predominantly playing a two-deep coverage. That means there's a lot of open spaces in the middle of that zone defense. I would expect to see Bruce Arians call some kind of a play right now to get either the slot receiver down the middle of the field or bring Eric Moles in motion and send him down through the middle. Try to widen the safeties with your outside receivers because you need 19 yards, so you have to get some kind of a play that's going to get you down the field. Look for the middle of the defense to be the area of the attack. And they better make sure they count for Carl Reeves on the offensive line. Here it is, third and 19 from the 36 with Tate out of the shotgun. Tate with time, going for Moles, and it's incomplete. the linebackers for North Carolina State getting a good drop, getting a very deep drop, knowing that they, they could give up any play inside of 20 yards. They got great drop drops on the zone defense. They forced the throw to come up over the top, and they were there to make the deflection. The orange bath for Mike O'Kane. Tough second half for Derek Tate and the Bulldogs. Jimmy Grissett way back to ensure against a turnover. A snap for Harvey. Take a look at the play again. See the deep drop by Damian Covington? He's going to go all the way back. He's 20 yards downfield and gets a hand on the football. That is great work by the middle linebacker, Damian Covington. Tried to run molds on the inside route. He was the guy to try to go to, but a great play by the senior linebacker. Damian Covington, as Carl Reeves, who has played a whale of a second half, celebrates the victory. They knew where they wanted to go. They had three around Eric Moulds. One more snap will do it. And the Wolfpack of North Carolina State prevail in the 95 Peach Bowl. What a job coaching this guy has done. Taking over a program under duress, Mike O'Kane has done a fabulous job as the head coach of the Wolfpack. Again, North Carolina State 28, Mississippi State 24. And don't forget, coming up next in Sports Center with Dan Patrick and Carl Ravage. We'll get you caught up on everything in sports today. The Orange Bowl postgame report, NFL wildcard situation, and a conversation as well with George Foreman. Now for Todd Blackley, Dr. Jerry Punch, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us once again. Happy New Year, everybody, and so long from Atlanta, Georgia.